Well, hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to this week's new episode of Primetime Gaming with Mr. Boomstick and Friends. And of course, I am your host, Mr. Boomstick XL, and we have an outstanding show planned for you today. Uh, hopefully, you can hang out for two hours. Hopefully, you enjoy this show enough to hit the like button. Uh, I would love to say often, but you can only hit it once. Hopefully you are doing so. Uh, I, I would ask that uh, before we get into the introductions, and we do have a great cast of characters here today, uh, I do uh, would ask uh, that if you could share this out on social media. For some reason, uh, only the small channels seem to be throttled by YouTube, who is not sending out the notifications. It is frustrating. It is something that I dealt with and many uh, other smaller shows dealt with early in 2020. And it took many, many weeks for YouTube to finally get their act together. I'm hoping that that is not in fact the case because many of us uh, put the, the uh, immense uh, amount of hours of work into these shows. And it is a shame that they go unnoticed and unwatched and unlistened to due to um, a technical error that really should be fixed. And, and I hate to say this, usually they drag their heels. But again, I want to thank everybody who is already here, everyone that is going to tune in, and let's get into the introductions. I'm going to start with someone that is very familiar. He is still one of the main casts. For the Xbox Factor podcast, he unfortunately had to take a hiatus because he had to get back to real life things like, let's say, teaching our youth. Please welcome the voice of the Xbox Expansion Pass, my very good brother, Insipid Ghost. Welcome to the program, my brother. Oh, thank you so much, man. It is so good to be back on a podcast with you talking about Xbox, talking about games. I have missed you. I have missed working with you. Uh, and while I love doing the Xbox expansion pass, uh, it, it, it means a lot to get to talk to other people because that's a solo show. And so to get to <laughs> have a dialogue is, is dope. And so thank you for having me. Uh, dude, it's great. It's great that you were able to uh, come back here today. Uh, next week, we're going to be having uh, someone new to the community, but not new to that you've never heard of him. He has been on Twitter. Uh, he is someone that is going to be making his um, first appearance on any of my shows. Raphael, if you're listening, my brother, we will see you back here to next week at 8 p.m. And we'll get his take on the whatever topics we're going to be talking about. But let's continue with our rest of the panel clowns first of all you missed last week due to potential illness it's glad and it's great to hear that you are back welcome to the program hey thanks for having me boom it's a pleasure being back and this is an amazing panel i don't think i've ever been on a show with insipid ghost before so this might be the first with him so excited to get to hear his views and hear him talk with us well, it's it's yeah, it's great to have him here. We just we did have Forte jump out. He probably lost connection. He will be back momentarily. And of course, Cyber Knox will be joining us. He is just handling a work call. Oh, here he is. Gaming Forte is back on the scene. And speaking of Gaming Forte, one of the most busiest and most productive people in our community, Gaming Forte, welcome to the program, my brother. Yo, man, it's, it's it's Monday, man. Can you can you believe that we're literally like what thirteen days away from Christmas, man? It's, like, it's yes, it's it's a, the, days, the nerves actually. start to when you say that, and, and you and you you say it with such joy, it starts oh, to man. break out the anxiety for many people. <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out to everybody out there, man. It's gonna um, the closer we get to that time of year, man, the more excited I get just because. I have kids. They they super excited to open up their stuff. I'm happy to give it to them. And then on nice. top of that, being in retail, I can see the end of the tunnel now. The tunnel is not as dark as it was a month ago. <laughs> so I can see the end of it. And um super excited for um that to finally come to fruition. But yeah, man, outside of playing games, man, just super enjoying the time that I spend here with you guys and can't wait to talk about the stuff that we're gonna talk about today. 
Well, it's great to have you back, brother. Definitely enjoy having you a part of this show each and every week. And uh, last and in no way least, uh, you knew him as Mag, uh, our resident Canadian. But now you can call him Dr. Evil because he has a cat that has no hair and he ah. is old. Welcome to the program, Mag. How are you feeling? I am doing fantastic. Uh, fantastic. Boom chat panel guys i am super excited to be here tonight uh we got some fire topics we got some great discussions and we've got incivic ghost i'm so excited i didn't even know he was on the show all of a sudden i clicked in and there he was so yes i'm very pumped for tonight and yes i got a hairless cat and yes i'm hairless myself so uh yeah it's gonna be a hell of a week and as for christmas forte you know what i gotta tell you i used to be in your shoes man because it was all about i was in the rest before i retired from the front lines of the restaurant scene from november 1st to january 1st we didn't get a day off it was 16 hours a day every day for all the christmas parties all the corporate functions all the baloney whatever right and uh man now that i'm out of it i don't miss it i don't miss it at all and i gotta tell you my christmas shopping was done before halloween so i am good to go ready to <laughs> ready to fire up a nice uh fat drink and uh, sit by the fire so anyways guys enough of that let's have a great show well thank you so much for being here and who showed up just in the nick of time like he knew, normally does when he's saving someone from the clutches of the penguin our resident cape crusader cybernox welcome to the program brother got here just in time boom what a sure mr for the world Whew. yeah glad to be here what's going on panel what's going on chat glad to see luke here today um it's gonna be a fun one we had a quite peculiar launch for a certain game so i know we have lots to talk about so let's get right to it yeah we're gonna we're gonna get into it i don't know how much of, of the cyberpunk we're going to cover i'm gonna be honest with you because uh i'm still well, actually i'm still waiting for my copy to arrive oh, amazon yes. has oh. once again uh sent another delay message oh, about the collector's edition or something yeah mm -hmm. Um, mm. and uh, it was supposed to be here on Thursday, and as of today, it's still not here. So I have not played it, but it's okay because I am quite enjoying um, my 40-plus hours into Immortal. Um, oh, nice. Phoenix Smash, Rising. Bro. It oh, is. Man, we got to talk about We should talk about that. Love it, that it, game. It is really something special. It is not your typical um, uh, Ubisoft game. I mean, yes, it does have the, you know, a lot of things on the map for you to do and, and, and collect, but there is a loot grind. Uh, if you enjoy that, it's there. Uh, mm -hmm. The writing is phenomenal. It is something that I've never seen them do. The, there is a, ver a very, very uh, strong comedy shtick, if you will, to it. Uh, it's told uh, it's told from uh, multiple perspectives, one of which breaking the fourth wall, which is fantastic. Um, Love it. And, and I'm absolutely loving it. I'm 40 hours into it. I am. I don't know how close I am to beating it because now I'm starting to collect certain things. I'm, I'm kind of like cleaning up the map. Um, I actually don't want to beat it. I have unlocked everything. Did you unlock all different, all the different um, areas? All of them, but the center, About not the, the one center. in the middle. Okay. Yeah, 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 not the yeah. one in the middle yet. But oh, uh, I'm getting, again. It's it, it's certainly a, it's a game worth your time. I've been playing um, it so much. I've been playing on Switch too. Oh, good for you, dude. And like I said, Switch, I have, man, I have spent some money on Switch, and I am loving it. My my, my physical collection is glorious that I'm going to put, <laughs> it up on, uh, put it up on social media for everyone to see what I've been up to. But let's, let's get into the first topic of the day. Um, you know, with every yearly video game awards, or in short, the VGAs hosted by Jeff Keighley, uh, we are treated to big world premieres, uh, and they're not only expected, I think they're demanded by the community at large, um, and it's something that they headline the show with. Now, sure, of course, it is an award show, um, but, and of course, that is, I want people to understand, it's super important, because if you're someone that has worked on a, a particular game for, let's say, the last four years of your life, and you have put sometimes 14 and 15 hour days into this creation, and it gets out there. And it is the world that is the internet. Usually uh, it gets picked to pieces and everyone is hating on it. But when you get up, uh, get picked or nominated for one of these awards and you win it, it is such an elation. It is such a big deal. And again, I know that from a gamer's point of view, we don't always get it because we just want to play what we want to play but from a from a um a producer's point of view from an artist's point of view these vgas are important 
important. Uh, and I, and of course, I, I've said this publicly, and I, I'll say it again on this show. I not only uh, applaud Jeff Keeley. I, again, I don't always agree with him. Uh, I have talked to him publicly uh, and politically correctly, if you will, on social media. He has responded. Um, I don't always agree with some of his tactics. Um, but I do say that he is something that is uh, he is someone that is needed because he has given relevance to gaming more than just a dollar sign and how many copies of said copy you sold. Um, but getting back to the topic at hand, uh, this this uh, award show, uh, the three main players are expected to be there in a big way. Of course, I'm talking about PlayStation, Nintendo, and Microsoft. And uh, what wasn't there and what was surprising and literally could be an entire topic all by itself is how little... PlayStation and Nintendo showed off. I, I was completely wrong on my picks. I expected Breath of the Wild 2. I expected God of War 2. I expected at least Horizon Zero Dawn. I expected some big bombs, potentially Silent Hill, Metal Gear Solid, you, you, whatever flavor you want to add. And they kind of got, they kind of limped in and, and limped out. Uh, both of these companies, but you see, we're going to talk about my, Microsoft and the Xbox platform because they quietly stole the game awards now again i know we talked about this on friday uh, friday morning's record breaking um breakfast with boom not only did we have 700 and plus people in the chat we had over 11,000 views and it's still going up and considering i only have 7,000 subs folks that's a big deal for a very very small channel um but you know why a lot of people did not expect much from Microsoft was because of their one of their fearless leaders in Aaron Greenberg. And he actually said something that took the wind out of the sails on many people, including myself. Um, and he actually said this, you will see us and our social handles promoting tune in for the game awards tomorrow. We hope you support the industry and watch while we will, while we will have a couple of moments in the show, I would dial back expectations way down versus speculation. I am seeing, especially on how big we went last year. Now, look, um, like I said, that statement I think took the wind out of many people's sails. Now, I honestly immediately responded to Aaron and he didn't respond back to me because, you know, obviously he got a thousand tweets on this one, maybe even more about how he's not saying that they're not going to be there. But I mean, like, how would you top a, a console reveal and a Hellblade 2? Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if you can actually top that. Uh, so I think what he did was right. Um, but you know what? This just real quick, I'm, and again, I, you may be new to the program. This is what they showed off, and this is how impressive of a list it was. You know, uh, the initiative showed off a cinematic trailer for Perfect Dark, starring the reimagined Joanna Dark. And to be honest with you, folks, the tone of the game seemed very dark, serious, and will feature lifelike graphics that many in the Xbox community have been asking for. Uh, we also got to see official gameplay trailer for Flight Simulator running on the Xbox Series X, and that it has a release date of summer 2021. We did get Warhammer 40K, which is a timed exclusive, uh, and it's going to be releasing in early 2021 on Windows and, of course, um, you know, Xbox, and it looks fantastic. And more importantly, it is in Game Pass, day and date, which is pretty damn awesome. We did get a chance to see the cinematic trailer for ARC 2 starring Vin Diesel, and it has been confirmed that it is an Xbox Series X and S exclusive, and that was confirmed by Clobrio, who we know as the industry insider for xbox we also got to take a we also got a look at scarlet nexus which showed off some new gameplay and quite frankly if you are into anime you are going to really really dig this game because it looks fantastic and finally and i think one of the biggest announcements that we're going to talk on the back half of the of today's program is Master Chief officially announced for and immediately playable in Fortnite now again Maybe it's not your bag. Maybe you have no interest in Fortnite. But I'm going to tell you this right now. This is the secret plan that Microsoft was doing behind our backs, right in front of our faces. 
and no one saw it coming. And again, we're going to talk about this on the back half. But Luke, I, I want to go to you first as, because you're our special guest. You know, again, Aaron said temper your expectations. People took it as a negative. And, and it's the Internet, so we expect that kind of shenanigans. But I'm going to be honest with you. They did an amazing job. And I think, again, in my opinion, quietly stole the Game Awards. What are your thoughts on what was shown at the big show? Well, that's a lot to take in. Boom. Uh, well, I think let's let's talk about Aaron Greenberg first. He was absolutely right to say what he said in coming out and tempering expectations because the Internet is ravenous. And we as gamers throughout any of the gaming communities, you know, any of the first party, Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft uh, and any gamers in general have a tendency to when expectations are not set, we shoot for the moon. And anything less than what we're aiming for feels like a misfire and we get frustrated. So it was smart for him to come out and do that. And I think that's a lesson that Cyberpunk is teaching us, that Nintendo continuously teaches us. Uh, and it's a lesson that we need to continue to take in. Uh, as far as the overall announcements and the quality of the announcements and showing that Xbox had, I thought they had a great sh showing at the Game Awards because uh, in many ways this is uh, a second E3, uh, for lack of a better descriptor on that. Um, and as I know I said to you off air uh, and sentiment that I've, I've stretched into uh, a couple different platforms, when when you are not represented well in the nominations for any number of reasons that I, I don't care to get into, but if you're not in the, the nomination category, your name's not going to be coming up in the biggest game showcase of the year. So what do you do? You find a way to bring your name up. And they did that by having uh, game pass representation by showing off their flagship mascot in the world's biggest battle Royale. And by revealing one of the biggest IPs, uh, for them in this coming generation uh, that, you know, much to, we talk about expectations when they, they put on a tremendous amount of pressure on the initiative by bringing up perfect dark, or, sorry, by, by saying it was a quad a studio. And when they bring up perfect dark, now expectations are very high for that. So they need to find a way to temper that as well. All that to say, boom, uh, they had an incredible showing. I think they should be very proud of the messaging that they put out before, after, and during the show. And they gave us a lot to look forward to uh, in this coming generation. Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm muted. I yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, one, one, of the, <laughs> one of the announcements. Your tape was so good. He was speechless. I, I tell you, it really was. It was fantastic. Uh, I, I glanced over was the Cyberpunk X for, uh, Forza, uh, you know, Forza Horizon 4 crossover where oh, these yeah. are was in there as for free which again it's one of those things that you know they do have the marketing rights and why not throw these car into one of the best racing games in the entire uh universe of racing games to be honest um but you know you're right and i think that um one of the things uh, i think anyone could take away from this particular um showing was two major points one they showed First party, second party, and third party deals. Uh, you know, right? They sh they showed a little bit a sprinkling of everything uh, that could potentially uh, be something that is maybe not for you, but the next person standing next to you or behind you or in front of you or on your left, right? Um, and the other thing, I, and you know, to that point, uh, not every game is for every gamer, but they are going out of their way to make sure that they offer a vast amount of genres and experiences for anyone that decides to pick up an Xbox controller, a console, or even, you know, potentially join the service by getting Xbox Game Pass and playing on their phone, playing on their pewter, playing on their tablet. Uh, and I think that it, it is a point that Microsoft, more specifically, Phil Spencer continues to drive home. And I think it's important. I know a lot of people like myself, we, we want these third person over the shoulder adult themed story driven games that we see on Sony. There's no doubt about it. We're going to get it in perfect. I mean, uh, uh, well, not perfect dark because that's first person, but we're going to get it 
in Hellblade. We're going to get it in Fable. We're going to get it in Compulsion's unannounced game, which is supposed to be a Bioshock type of game meets Uncharted, right? So we, those experiences are coming. Um, but I think that what I love about Microsoft is that they still are going to deliver on what they in 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 their DNA believe is important and that is multiplayer and we're seeing that that yes we're going to get the single player experiences but they're still going to bring us the multiplayer games that they're known for uh, i loved what they did and like i said quietly i think that they had one of the best game awards outside of 2019 which is pretty pretty hard to top let's get cyber Knox into the conversation you know you watched the game awards just like we all did uh, mm -hmm. besides it being unbelievably produced and one of the best in the business in my opinion i think it's the, one of the best game awards i've personally ever watched uh, and so it's so good that i watched it twice uh, to make sure that i had all my notes correct um what what are your thoughts on Microsoft's um, presence at the awards? Um, I think they did uh, a, a good job of showcasing um, some of the uh, some of the titles that are upcoming to the Xbox ecosystem. You know, um, let me see. Uh, Perfect Dark was a was a surprise was a surprise. You know, um, to some, I think most of us uh, kind of speculated that that would be the game that they would be working on. Um, but yeah, I think, like you said, boom, I think they surprised a lot of people just because Sony and Nintendo kind of um, didn't show much this year. Uh, so Microsoft, even though Aaron Greenberg said for us to, you know, uh, hold our, uh, hold off on our, uh, subdue our expectations. Um, I still think they delivered. I think Ark was a surprise too. Um, it, it's kind of like you said, they kind of showed off a little bit of everything. Obviously, Game Pass was a you know a, a surprise, just like it always, um, like it always is. It does a lot, you know. Always, every time, some every time they showcase something about Game Pass, I think it's just shows how much tremendous values there um, there isn't at that service. But um, yeah, um, I I, 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 w I was I was actually surprised that um, the initiative is working on Perfect Dark. But um, yeah, I, I can't wait to see what they have. Um. Yeah, I, I thought it was a good show overall. I'm like you. I really enjoyed the the game awards. I think it, it's uh, it showcases a lot of things that are upcoming this year. You know, it was a difficult year overall for so many different things. But um, I thought I thought the show was good overall, and uh, I think Microsoft did a did a good job showcasing what we have to look forward in the future. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Real quick, uh, I want to shout out Middle Lion, uh, Lemon, I said Lion, uh, Middle Lemon in, uh, in the chat. He says, really want Xbox to get wild card and make ARC 2 exclusive. I want a Horizon Zero Dawn type of game. Well, guess what? You're going to get your wish because from what all what it has been explained, that is um, uh, an exclusive for uh, Xbox permanently. That's not a timed exclusive. They're currently working directly with uh, the company, the developer, and I believe Microsoft will be publishing that game. So I believe that from what we understand and what Clobriel uh, had explained on Twitter, that is a permanent exclusive. That's not a timed exclusive. But again, maybe I, there's something else that happened that I don't know. But from what I understand, it is a permanent exclusive and it is a single player experience story driven game uh, i don't know if it's going to be on the uh, level of horizon zero doing one of my favorite playstation games but it would be pretty dope if it would be for sure uh you know let's get gaming forte into the conversation now gaming forte you know you and i have you know we talk what way outside of just podcasting and you and I have come to the understanding that Microsoft is kind of walking to their own drum. They're not really in competition to go right. toe to toe with Sony or Nintendo. Uh, they are just doing their own thing uh, led by game pass, which is the greatest service of, of all time. And, um, you know, again, sure, they want to sell consoles, but I think that one of the things that showed up there in a big way was that montage from Game Pass. And it kind of, in my opinion, put the exclamation point on the evening because not only did they show a bunch of really great games, some that were a surprise to many, but they, they put the cherry on top of what I thought was a perfect show with showing the 65 million eyes 
or pairs of eyes that were on this event. Hey, Xbox Game Pass, you can get in three months for a buck and look at all the games you're getting. Did you think they had an amazing show? Yeah, I think, I mean, of all the, the, the way that the show broke down is, you know, Nintendo showed a bunch of stuff. Um, capstone by the fact that they got um uh, Sephiroth coming into Final F- coming into um Smash Smash Brothers, which is huge, 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 huge. And they showed a lot of um indie stuff, a lot of third party stuff that's coming to the platform, which you know kept them relevant because a lot of people know that yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's coming out on your Switch you could play. Uh, PlayStation on their hand really didn't show as much, but the biggest thing is the reason they're gonna be in everybody's thought process is the fact that uh Last of Us literally cleaned up on every award so playstation is winning all the rewards so it just it just kind of keeps them in the conversation even though they didn't show anything when it comes to next generation other things you're going to be playing on your playstation 5 xbox has a lot that they had to work with they had to you know they got to win back the will of a lot of the people that are kind of upset that yeah we really appreciate that you gave us this next gen console we definitely love the fact that you know 60 frames per second and 4k and all this other stuff is the direction you're going in and if you see games like you know if you see games like um like destiny and immortals and you see games like uh assassin's creed and you see how they're running on the system it's like you definitely understand why you want to have that system especially if you're a person that wants to have the best experience you person you possibly can have but the thing that i love the most is the fact that they just doubled down even further in the thing that they're really good at which is services, Game Pass, talking about it as much as possible. That's the one thing that myself and a lot of other people in the community says they need to talk about it a little bit more. They need to get that uh, umbrella. They need to uh, spread that that um, umbrella out a little bit further, so it's not just in our gaming sphere. It you know permeates throughout you know the market, so even casual fans even know about it. I know being a person that's in the stores that there are casual fans that know about Game Pass, but they really only know about it from people like Boom, people like you know, except the ghost clouds, myself, people that are in this ecosystem that we talk about now, they don't really hear it from Microsoft because Microsoft doesn't promote it outside of you already having an Xbox and it being plastered right there on your dashboard. But what about all the people that don't have Xboxes? How are you going to hit that 3 billion gamers you want to? Uh, when a person goes to YouTube, are you streaming um, commercials and stuff or ads as people are watching like video game content on their system, on their on their tablets and stuff, let them know like Game Pass, get in for three for a dollar for three months and you can get xCloud that's going to allow you to get into all these different um into these different services and stuff. That's what I want to see them do and this is a really big first step because like you said, it's the biggest gaming show of the year outside of E3 which we didn't have this year. So you know, this was the biggest show that they had and they they literally lived up to that expectation. Some people are going to say that we didn't see a lot, especially when it came from Perfect Dark and stuff. We did just see a CGI trailer, but this also just goes back to what we've been saying for years. Just show me what you got. Mm-hmm. This is what we always talked about, even with PlayStation. It was kind of one of those memes for PlayStation, like, you know, PlayStation shows their games three, four years out. But the one thing I will say about PlayStation doing that is at least we know what we bought the system for. At least we know what to look forward to. We understand that things happen and some stuff might get pushed back. Some things might get canceled. I think I don't think the cancellation thing is going to be a problem anymore. But we do know that games do suffer in development sometimes, especially in these trying years. We're going to be having things happening that a lot of people probably are going to be looking forward to. But at least we know these are the things that's on the table. It's seeing Perfect Dark, seeing what the initiative was finally working on, which was the worst kept secret ever. I was excited. Now, did it blow me away? No, because I already knew it. But it's good to know that this is something that Microsoft is actually working on. Now we can just theorize on what this game actually is going to be on top of all the other things that they threw in game pass so shout out to control finally being in game pass like phil spencer said so long ago and they said it would never make it there amazing game especially if you got ray tracing uh because you got the new xbox you can really see the um gem that that game is and um i think game pass is in a really really good place 
and them showing Perfect Dark just basically strengthens that even more. And the more games that Microsoft shows from first party, that's going to be a part of that. Because remember, every Microsoft first party is available in Game Pass, not only on your console, on PC and xCloud day yep. one. Yeah. So that was just another way to buffer that support. And now the more they do that over the course of the next year, the even stronger that message is going to be. So they did a good job in actually getting people's attention with that. Now they just need to do it on a mass, a more mass scale when it comes to promoting it like at NBA and NFL and, you know, like how PlayStation basically does it. Yeah. No, and, and real, real, can I jump in on that one? Please, yeah. by all means. So, so real talk, I think Forte nails it the, and when he talks about – the platforms that xCloud is going to be available on. This future of video games is not one of boxes and consoles. It is a matter of screens. And yes. we've seen that in Microsoft strategy. And it's odd, I think, per, I, I thought it was odd for us to have an amazing set of announcements come out by way of Xbox Wire and press releases that they mm -hmm. were going to be putting xCloud uh, onto PC. Huge deal. Yep. They're going to be putting xCloud onto yep. iOS. Huge deal. Tap so many more markets. I don't have the, a great PC. I'm never going to be able to play Flight Simulator. Up oh, all of a sudden, I can with xCloud. I want to play Gears Tactics with the mouse and keyboard. Suddenly, I can with xCloud. This is a big deal, and it should have been mentioned more at, at the Game Awards and spotlighted there. I'm surprised they didn't. Uh, Given the other stuff they did show, I would have thought and and play the and play on your PC via your browser or something, some verbiage there. But that's the biggest win of this entire uh, last two months amidst the console launches is to find out that these games are no longer bound by those consoles or your uh, portable platform of choice being iOS or Android. You can now play anywhere. That's how they win gamers in the future. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know something to that point. I just want to put the the cherry on top of this delicious Sunday that you two you put together was that the generation that Microsoft is looking to get. And again, we're going to get into the real specific details that I went and I, I spent a lot of time on the next topic, uh, researching and putting it together to make it to make sense. They they're not targeting us. They're not targeting the mags and the clowns and the fortes and the cybernoxes and, and, and Luke Lords or the booms or even anybody in this chat who they're targeting is the younger generation who grew up. See, like we want to play on big screens because we're big old gamers, right? We've been gaming for a long time. The bigger screen, the bigger the experience. But the younger generation, the Fortnite generation, the Minecraft generation, they're used to playing on small screens on the go. That is why this is a big win because Microsoft is targeting. See, again, you know, Mr. Badbit, good friend of mine, a good, good friend of the community, personal friend of mine. And I, I, I know Ooh. he always yeah, He always boos you. So you can boo him live on the um, <laughs> We always have this conversation where we say both Sony and Microsoft are traveling shoulder to shoulder down the same path, and they are carrying these big loads. One is going to the left, and one is going to the right. And you know something? That is okay because each each you know mammoth company is doing their own thing for their own players in their own way. Microsoft's way is targeting the 3 billion gamers that are out there that play on PC, that play on mobile, that play on their tablets. And a perfect example, and, and Luke, Luke, you'll get a real kick out of this. We have it, we have it good, a good, a good authority that Sea of Thieves, one of your favorite games, one of Mr. Babbitt's favorite games, is doing very well in Japan and Korea. And where did they just launch at Project X Cloud? Those two, those two countries. So they yeah. are looking to expand their borders outside of the plastic box that sits on our shelves right now. And Microsoft is onto something. Again, they sometimes we we said this in the pregame. Sometimes Phil does things that we sit back and like, you know, I don't understand this move. It really doesn't make any sense. And then six, seven, eight, nine months down the road. 
forward, we start to see all of these pieces to the puzzle that he's put together form a picture. And you're like, oh, shit. Now he is on to something. That's why he's leading Xbox. That's why he's in charge, because I didn't see it, but he knew it already. So it, 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 there's a lot to get excited about. And again, if you want to be a console gamer, you want the hardware like you like I have standing right next to me, that th th they allow you to do that. But if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to buy a $500 box and you want to play on your tablet, because that's how you enjoy playing, Microsoft says go crazy. It's $15 a month, and you can get over 300 games. And, oh, by the way, all of our new games are in there too um so it, it is a big big deal um but let's get clowns in on the conversation clowns for you what were your opinions on the kind of show that microsoft brought to the game awards um i think that microsoft was very silent in what they were going to do they didn't want to hype up anyone's expectations because they didn't want the, you know, the media and the internet to go crazy and say that it was a letdown. Instead, they just kept your expectations low and then came out kind of like with this silent uh, flex, I would say. Because now we definitely know the media can't say that the initiative isn't working on anything. We've seen a little bit of what they're working on. And I think the Game Pass stuff was kind of like a huge thing in there. And I think, you know, that really is essentially the future uh, of gaming, whether we like it or not. I think uh, gaming as a service and streaming services are going to get bigger and bigger over time. So I just think Microsoft is kind of flexing, saying, look at us. Uh, the initiative is making something. Plus, uh, Game Pass is, is successful. Look at this. Yeah, I agree. I, I, and you know something? They did, like I said, I, I think they I, they really uh, did well, in my opinion. And and I think that you're right. I, I think that they they did more than flex. Personally, clowns. I think that they walked silently and carried a very big stick and knocked it out of the park. That is my opinion on it. Uh, and I think a lot of people that are here. Uh, would agree and uh, I saved the best for last because he's going to have not only the loudest point but the biggest one of the evening uh, Mag listen you got a yeah. chance to sit back and watch the game awards uh, transpire uh, you and I and, and it's you know and, and all the people involved in our private DM were both shocked and a little taken aback by Aaron Greenberg's um, statement uh, again it took the wind out of the sail for many but not for us because we said well, just because they're not going big, like uh, a reveal of a new console, doesn't mean they're not going to show up. And show up they did. Yeah. What are your thoughts on them silently stealing the Game Awards? I will agree with you 100% that I feel that they stole the Game Awards. Now, you asked me this question just a few days ago, and I thought about it for a minute. And then uh, <clears throat> I think it was Saturday night, and it was very late. And then I said to myself, wait a minute. Why is nobody talking about this? So what I wanted to do tonight is I wanted to talk about my feelings about this. First of all, let's get this out of the way right now. They had an amazing show. When Aaron Greenberg said what he said about tempering your expectations, I didn't believe him. Okay, I didn't believe him. I don't know why. There was something about it where I'm like, maybe he's being cheeky. Because you know Greeny could be cheeky sometimes, right? He so could, Yeah, he can. You know what I'm saying? So maybe he was just being kind of funny and cute. And I said, I'm not going to buy this. Okay, I'm not going to buy this. So I just kept, I just, you know. I didn't temper my expectations, but I also didn't get excited. However, I wanted to tackle this from a different point of view. And it really struck me. And I was like, why aren't people talking about this? I mean, outside of the Xbox community. You know, the Xbox community was excited. I saw it on Twitter, saw it on Facebook, saw it on everything. You know, saw it, it but, but barely a mention anywhere. Barely a mention on, <laughs> on media sites, anything else. They just said, oh, yeah, Perfect Dark's coming. Anyways, back to the whatever. <laughs> You know, back to cyberpunk running around with no head or whatever, right? You know, or uh, so they, they, it was like a it was like a non issue. And I thought to myself, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. But then I realized it kind of does make a little bit of sense. So here we go. This is what I'm thinking. Okay, they stole the show. All right, it was a stealth attack. Okay, of some big time reveals and exclusives, exclusive trailers, at least announcements. I mean, Perfect Dark, that was amazing. I mean, it was what well, isn't it nice to finally be able to say it's Perfect Dark instead of saying it might be in the Perfect Dark universe. It might yeah. be a Perfect Dark spinoff. It might be a sequel. It might be this. Well, now we know what it is. So thank God we could get that out of our head. 
the Game Pass uh, announcements, amazing, et cetera, et cetera. But we already know all this. Okay, and it's wonderful. It truly is wonderful. And it's great for us Xbox gamers and for people who are going to invest in the Xbox Eagle ecosystem once the systems are actually able to uh, be purchased. Okay? And the future of Xbox is going, dare I say, is going to dominate the world scene at some point. Okay? I'm not talking next week. Okay? But at some point, they are going to. And now, if you look at them, they might just be Next to maybe EA, I mean, considering what just happened today. But, you know, they might be one of the, the largest video game company in the uh, in the world, okay? Not because of they have, you know, the big acquisitions, that, but you look at the entire thing, they actually might be the biggest video game company in the world. However, yeah. Yeah. we keep looking to the future. Looking to the future. But what's happening right now? It's hard to ignore that they stole the show for amazing announcements, but Forte said it. Insipid Ghost said it. I believe Cybernox 2077, by the way. I love that name. Um, yeah. he, he said it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who won all the awards? Sony. Yeah, they did. Sony might talk a whole lot of crap. Okay. They might. And not that sure they might. They do. Dance moves might shovel a lot of manure in, uh, on their fan base. Okay. Faster and harder than anybody I've ever seen alive. But boy, do they ever back it up with straight nine to tens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Across the board. Don't call me a pony, okay? Don't. Don't say any of those ridiculous things because it's true. You look at those scores. You look at those games. You look at that award show. You know why Sony showed up with nothing? Because they won everything. Yeah, strong point. Okay? They point. stole the spotlight in that respect, constantly stealing the spotlight because their games, regardless of how you feel about Sony, I don't like the company, Sony, but I love their PlayStation, okay? But their games are unbelievable, and they're un. Here's the key. This is the key. This is what struck me on Saturday night. Okay, the games are unforgettable. They, they truly are. Yeah, that's the key. It's that they're unforgettable, regardless if you liked Abby or Joel or blah 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 blah. Okay, I didn't like what happened to this. I didn't like what. That's fine. You don't have to like those things. You don't have to like this. But did I still you put fifty hours into that game though. <laughs> Here, boom. Think about this. Let me answer me this question before I keep going. Answer me this question. You may not have liked the story of Last of Us 2 and where it went, but did you forget that game? No, but you know something what's crazy is I fell in love with Abby and completely out of love with Ellie. Right. Okay, but yeah. did you ever forget that story? No, no. absolutely not. People no. who hated it are still talking about it. That means that it struck a chord, whether positive or negative, it still struck a chord. Okay? Now, the point is, the reason the media is not talking about Microsoft's stellar showing at this Game Awards show and Sony showed absolutely nothing is because we haven't played that Last of Us or God of War on the Xbox yet. I, that's a, that's a, that might be a bit of a bold statement, but that's how I feel. That's my personal opinion. I've even talked to Crispy Bomb. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm totally throwing him under the bus right now. Crispy, I know you're in the chat. Okay. We talked about it before. He's a big Gears player. I asked him a question about a month ago. I said, Gears is amazing. I loved it. I love the story. I love the, you know, I love the campaign. That was good. The multiplayer, yeah, I'm, I'm not a multiplayer guy with uh, Gears. But I asked him, I go, did that game set the world on fire? He said no. And he's a big time Gears player. So he was w willing to admit that. Okay. And that was, the, that was their last really big title. I believe we will, anyways, in the future, the key to success of Xbox will not only be their subs to Game Pass or their xCloud, those will all be big-time things, okay? But their big-time games need to stick the landing. I've been saying this for months and months and months and have such a profound effect on the gaming community that it can't be ignored. It must be played. You know, uh, Hellblade 2 is a must play. That's how it has to come across. It can't. It has to get tens on IGN. I don't care if you like IGN or not, but IGN has to give it a ten in order for it to be recognized. So they have to be must plays. They all need to be up for game of the year. This is the mountain that Microsoft has to climb, and they know that. So they have to deliver in the end. That's how you get people talking. Okay, as an Xbox fan, sure, I'm pumped for Halo Infinite and Perfect Dark. I'm pumped. But they need to be next level in order to get to that next level. Well, that's so why that's why it's been delayed for a year. Exactly. That, that's exactly why they delayed it for a year because it has to be. It, exactly it. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. They knew it. And so showing everyone what's coming, that's awesome. But to truly have an impact, those games need to be legendary. 
If they aren't, that's fine. And even if they aren't, that's fine. Xbox will still continue to grow. It'll still make huge amounts of money, profit, all that kind of stuff. But to be front and center with, uh, with the media and to dominate the mind share, you've got to deliver. You know, uh, you've got to deliver. Okay. After making announcements and reveals, they've done very little wrong under Phil. Okay. I don't care what you know what naysayers or whatever say. They've done very little wrong. Okay, yeah, Mac. I, that's why we've mentioned here before. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. Xbox Studios next game needs to wow everyone. It's exactly. Like critics, the what band, I've been saying. Everyone. That's what I've been saying for the last five minutes here. This, they need mm -hmm. to, and things getting delayed. That's fine. That can't be helped. Okay, we know what's going on this year, but when they do come, they need to be on every list for game of the year. Here's an example. You know, I just thought of this example. This, here's a good one. Okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger, this is way back in like 1980, okay, 79, 78. Okay, when he was doing the Mr. Uh, the Mr. Olympic, uh, Mr. Universe competitions and all that kind of stuff, okay, he went up on the stage. This is the very first time before he even won his very first title, okay? Think about this. He went up on stage, started flexing, started doing his thing, you know, doing all the, you know, the Hulk Hogan uh, stances, whatever, right? He's doing all that kind of stuff. He goes off the stage, everybody claps. And the next guy that was supposed to come up, actually, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was Lou Ferrigno, believe it or not, Mr. Incredible Hulk himself. And he got delayed a little bit. So Schwarzenegger said to himself, I remember watching this and it stuck with me for like 40 years because it, it, it just said something to me. He said to himself, everyone needs to see what I am. So you know what he did? He marched his ass back on the stage unannounced while uh, Ferrigno there was being delayed. Okay. He went back out there and just started flexing again. And everybody was so taken aback by it. Okay. That he just did an, uh, another impromptu show. And it was so unorthodox and ballsy that nobody there forgot it. They're yeah. still talking about that incident 45 years later. And he dominated and he won. When Xbox has those Game Award announcements in their hands, ready to go, they need to be that Schwarzenegger. They need to march up on that stage. And they need to be like, we are here and we are all this man. They got to puff out their chest and show yeah. the world what they got. But they got to deliver. They got to deliver when the when the when the when the games are downloaded on my hard drive and the controller is in my hand. I have to be there, and you know, like the guy from those old Max L commercials from the '80s, where like he gets blown away on the couch. That's what I gotta be. Okay, that's a really old reference. My God, I'm showing my age tonight. <laughs> but I gotta tell you something. Okay, it's just a matter of nailing the final product and getting these experiences in the hands of gamers when Xboxes are actually stocked on the shelves. When that happens. You need to drive it home. That's all I'm trying to say. And, you know, and you make a lot of sense. And, and I think that you know, considering that this was a year that very few mistakes were made. Sure, there were some. This was a strong statement to not only the gaming industry, not only the gaming media, not only to the Xbox gamers, but the potential new Xbox gamers, but that you, this is the best place to play. It is the most friendly. It is the most um, consumer friendly, uh, you know, platform. It gives you the best bang for your buck and you don't even need a box to play these games. And I think that th this was a strong way to close the year out because I mean, the reality is, is we're probably not going to get any more, big information before the end of the year. Now, January, who knows? But this was a strong uh, way to close out the year. And this was actually a very strong topic to open uh, the show where we have almost 400 people here. First of all, I want to thank the first Super Chat of the evening. Uh, Gary Duddle drops a very generous and outrageous $15 Super Chat and says, thank you, Boom, for a year of great content. Well, thank you, dude. I appreciate you listening to the content. Looking forward to the next two years going under the radar. Uh, like uh, He says two games that are going under the radar are Stalker 2, which looks dope, and The Gunk. Yes, The Gunk does look really good. Next six years should be so different than the last six years. Indeed, it should. Um a good friend of the show, Viper XT, drops a very generous, outstanding five dollars super chat and says Aaron Greenberg also confirmed that Arc Two is exclusive to Xbox. Yes, indeed he did, and I'm glad to hear it because listen, whether you like Ben Diesel or not, Arc is a very, very popular game, and it's one that a lot of people play. And this is going to be a much different Arc. 
This is going to be the single player, story driven, adult themed, graphical intense type of game. And Microsoft is looks like they're going. They're, they're putting some serious bucks behind this, and I'm happy to see it. Uh, Viper XT drops an additional outstanding five dollars. Super Chan says, with the games announced at the VGAs, Microsoft now has at least eighteen games coming in 2021 that have some uh, some form of exclusivity. Indeed, that's right. That's a lot of people don't see again. People aren't looking at the big picture. I think 2021 is going to be a big year for Xbox and its fans. A good friend of the show, Black Eye Dog. Welcome back, brother. Hopefully you are well. He drops an outstanding $5 super sticker. Uh, I want to thank you for your generosity. Now, before we move on to topic number two, and the next one is pretty damn big. I do want to remind everyone that this Friday, is Christmas with Mr. and Mrs. Boomstick. That's right. It's the annual, the third annual Christmas holiday special that we do each and every year. And this year is going to be one of the biggest prize giveaways. We're giving over $500 worth of digital um, uh, gift cards away as well as a robot white Xbox Series X controller and a dual sense. And say, and so you say to yourself, well, how do I win one of these incredible prizes? Well, look, the truth is, I would love to say, just show up into the chat and you have a chance. The reality is, is that uh, in order to, because I don't have any sponsors, you know, I, I don't have, you know, a GameSpot or GameStop knocking on my door to say, hey, we want to support you with with wares. This, all of the stuff that we donate or we give away in prizes, we pay for. Mrs. Boomstick and I, we pay for that, and we use the super chat. So how we're doing it this year, and I think it's only fair, is if you are a channel member you're automatically entered. If you are a Patreon supporter, you are automatically entered. And if you drop a Super Chat from December 1st, which all Super Chats have been recorded up until the 18th, that day that we're doing it, this Friday, you will be entered automatically to win one of the prizes, and those prizes will be doled out on Friday. Again, it's the only, it's the fairest way that Mrs. Boom and I can do it because we have to support the fans that support this small channel. So I do want to move on to the big topic. Now, this one had me excited because it's an original piece. It's one that took me a couple of days to write, a couple of days to research, and it's one I think is very thought perplexing and it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, when looking at how Phil Spencer has uh, has been running the Xbox division since his promotion in late 2017, the head of Xbox uh, have uh, you know has been doing things that we have all asked them to do. Uh, it has been a privilege and an honor as a as a as a content creator to cover the Xbox platform, my favorite platform, because, you know, obviously, if you look back to 2013, there was a lot of negativity, and there still is, but Microsoft is doing lots of things right. Now, after pondering on this particular topic for a while, I came to the conclusion that it's uh, that this is very reminiscent of Marvel's secret invasion. That's right, I'm bringing comics into the conversation, and I say that because... I, will, I have here, I have things detailed uh, of everything that Phil Spencer has done in our faces, but really behind our backs to lead up to the announcement of Halo Infinite's Master Chief being added to Fortnite and why I believe it is the end game for Phil's big plan for world domination in the next generation. So I'm going to break down what he has done leading up to my point of how important Master Chief in Fortnite actually is. Now, in summer of 2017, Microsoft announces Xbox Game Pass. Uh, in 2018, Microsoft announces that they're building Project X Cloud. Uh, in June, on June 19th of 2019, Xbox Game Pass not only comes to PC, but on the same day, they announced that Game Pass Ultimate was announced combining Xbox Live, Xbox Game Pass, console and PC, and that would all be for one price. Now, this is where it gets good. September 15th, 2020, Phil Spencer announces that for no additional cost, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscribers would get xCloud added to the already incredible deal. On December 2nd, 
Microsoft quietly purchases Smash GG, taking another step closer to bringing that 3 billion gamers that Phil Spencer so desperately wants to want, uh, not only reach, but get involved in the Xbox ecosystem one way or another. Now, last and in no way least, Halo Infinite's Master Chief officially joins Fortnite. And Luke, you have a great story because not only did you buy him the minute he was available, you talked about on Twitter how it was great to see him in third person, but you got the Fortnite win, which is pretty impressive. Uh, and now here's the thing. The reason, if you look at the title, why Master Chief in Fortnite is part of Phil's secret plan is because who plays Fortnite? It's what we talked about moments ago. The same generation that plays on their tablets and on their phones right now. But here is the important thing. See, Master Chief means so much to everybody in this chat. We have over 400 people here. So Master Chief, whether you like him or you hate him, he means something to you in way, one way or another. Everyone on this panel has a very special Master Chief story, whether that be in multiplayer as a Spartan or, of course, whether that means you know you you and you, you are enamored in one of the many tales that have been told for the long almost 20 year franchise but it's the newer generation who don't know master chief now granted i know that this fortnite deal i believe was done way in advance and it was probably supposed to coincide with halo infinite's grand return on the series x launch of course folks that didn't happen but why this is important, and it holds potentially even more weight, is because kids are going to see us playing as Master Chief. They're going to say, whoa, what, that armor is cool. Who is that guy? Maybe they don't know who Master Chief is. But Microsoft's made it a way that you certainly will know who the Master Chief is now. And we are a year out from Infinite. Right. We don't know. Uh, we know that it, we know for a fact that it's coming in holiday. Do we know the specific date? No, but it's probably going to coincide with November 15th, the 20th anniversary of the Master Chief and the franchise, which is what I hope that they do. And the potential to get people who normally would not play Halo involved with what's coming up. What, what, what has been announced? Well, there's going to be a free to play Halo online right we know that that's coming is it going to potentially beat fortnite well probably not but some of those kids that are playing fortnite now may go over and get involved in the ecosystem which is what they want this is what phil's big dream is and he's planting these seeds for in my in my opinion world domination again it's not about how many consoles you sell that that's that's sony's thing Right, it's not about how many games you sell. That that's a Sony thing. Microsoft wants to sell subs. They want people invested in their ecosystem, and this is a good way to do it. Look, I want to go to you first on this. I know I put a lot of work into this, and this is a lot to digest. But I I, I specifically wrote it so it would make sense. On the going back to, from his promotion all the way to as 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 close as December fifth. Does this make sense to you? And is this part of Phil's plan to reach potentially 3 billion gamers? Luke, you're, you're, you're muted. Yeah, I was muted. I was muted. Go for it. See, I was returning the favor from earlier. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, okay. So let me, are you asking me if uh, there's a grand scheme and the Master Chief thing was part of it? Which, what's your, well, I mean, I mean, I, I suppose I could, I could, I, one could suggest that Master Chief joining Fortnite isn't an accident. You know, I, I, I mean, it's, it's safe to assume that, yes, it, it, it might be a deal that, that they worked on, but, you know, to coincide the launch with, which of course didn't happen. But when you think about Smash GG being purchased quietly by Microsoft, they're, they're, that's, that's an esport situation. Uh, I'm not saying that Microsoft is going to come in on the scene to become eSport everything, but obviously eSports is a big part of the community. Now, I I don't watch it. It's just it's not for me, maybe because I'm the old man in the room, but eSports is not my thing. But it's a lot of people's thing, and Microsoft is going to have one of the biggest multiplayer um, titles come back in a big way, and it's Halo. And having Master Chief in Fortnite 
which is a part of esports, right, is a big deal for a lot of people who maybe don't know who the Master Chief is. So it, I, I suppose I am asking, is this a part of Phil's master plan? Uh, yes, but I would not call it Phil's master plan. And I doubt, you know, in 2015 when they were looking at it, they're like, all right, and in 2021, we want Master Chief to be the main player of Fortnite. I don't think it was that so much as their goal to reach as many screens as possible encapsulates a number of different attacks into the market. And that includes the very, the very understandable box method of having consoles out there. It also includes uh, as Forte and I, and many of us have said, uh, putting things onto X cloud, accessing more screens. But the big thing when it comes to, to their strategy is they want the name Xbox to be synonymous with gaming in a way that at present it is not. And Nintendo is synonymous with gaming. Sony is synonymous with gaming. But when you say the word gaming, not everyone thinks Xbox uh, the way that many of us do. You know, to me, it's my primary, of course. And what better way to to raise brand awareness than to put your your uh, a flagship character for your flagship title uh, in the world's most popular battle royale? More to that point, uh, I'm a diehard Halo and Gears fan and see if these fan it's all over my walls and I have the statues, etc. Um, I have never had never played Fortnite. My students always talked about it. Uh, the Monday after the Monday after on their warm up, I put a picture of my battle of my victory Royale uh, from with plan with Joe and whatnot. And uh, by the way, boo, Joe, bad bit sucks. Um, <laughs> anyway, we won at some victory Royales and I put it up there and all the kids went nuts. They were like, Mr. Lore, I can't believe you're playing Fortnite. I saw that they put your guy in there from your game. And suddenly, old man, Mr. Lore, <laughs> old man ghost, the kids were like, that's from your game. And two <laughs> of them said, I downloaded that because of you, Mr. Lore. And then another one said, oh, he's from the Master Chief Collection. You should download that. And suddenly, Fortnite was the window into which more people were being exposed to Halo. Now, would that have done better with Infinite? Of course it would. And I will tell you wholeheartedly, gentlemen, this is not the end of the Halo content. Uh, I, and while I don't have inside sources, please don't misunderstand me. Look at what they did with Star Wars and that crossover back when they had lightsaber. Crazy, crazy amount of, uh, of, of content to purchase, yes. But energy swords, lightsabers, blasters, MA40s, assault rifles, BRs, sniper rifles, overpowered pistols. There's absolutely going to be more Halo content in there. And I would imagine as Fortnite themselves and Epic work to make their game the, the, the real Smash Brothers of the entertainment universe, not just gaming, we see more crossovers. It was awesome awesome guys to be playing with mr babbitt on his ps5 he was kratos i was master chief over on my series x we were out there getting royales having a blast talking junk enjoying ourselves that is real gaming and microsoft did, would not have cared if i was on my ps5 if i had bought master chief and was playing on my ps5 why would they? They I just gave them or I gave money to their brand and raised brand awareness. There is an old school mentality that if you buy the box, that's the only way to support the the brand. And that's not the case any longer. There are lots of ways to support the brand. And when you can give them no money or some money, they're going to take some. But more to the point, it was fun. It was fun. And I can't wait for the day that Master Chief is next to Marcus Phoenix in Fortnite hanging out with Kratos, playing with Cole from Infamous, Aloy's jumping into the vehicle, all while getting attacked by Banjo running over a hill. That's a really cool future. This is action figures coming together in a game, and this is one game amongst many. They said they wouldn't bring uh, Battle Royale to Halo. Well, they brought Halo to the biggest Battle Royale ever, and real talk, guys, that was awesome. Plus, seeing Master Chief in third person tells me yet again, we need a third person Halo game. Thank you very okay. much. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, we damn do. I will, I will end this this point and, and allow you guys to talk because I've talked a lot enough. But if I'm seeing this incredible Master Chief render in Fortnite, pretending that I'm Master Chief fighting the Covenant in my own mind as I play Fortnite of all games, uh, and we know that Halo can be reimagined in Halo Wars and then in a third person style... 
that tells me we should have a first person Gears of War Onyx Guard game. I agree. That tells me we should be doing yeah. more with the Banjo franchise. Sea of Thieves has room to, to expand itself past its 11 million concurrent players at one point. There's a lot of ways to take the franchises we know and love and continue making those for the people that want them, but do more with them. Imagine a Spec Ops Onyx Guard game in the Gears of War universe. Dope. Yeah. That would be dope. You know, yeah. so that I, that's the end thought I have there. I'm sorry. I, I got excited. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, listen, you, you bring up a lot of great points. And I, again, I know for a fact that Microsoft does, in fact, listen. I don't know if they listen to this particular show. I know for a fact that they do listen to the Xbox Factor podcast. But I will say this. I have been calling for this for the longest time. I've been booed. I've been booed off my own show about how a third person uh, Halo game needs to happen. A first person uh gears game needs to happen you know you know what i'd love to see come to gears i'd love to see a a a, a side story now whether they make this into a, a part of gear six or an, uh, their own title because there is a lot of odst type of uh of, of stories could be told for gears uh, i'd love to see something with the carmine brothers uh you know they're in every game right i, I don't know forget Hive Buster DLC tomorrow, free in, for all Game Pass Ultimate members. Three hour go. DLC. That's, yeah. I'm sorry, I, again, I jumped in, but that is more story for three, four hours of story mode for Game Pass Ultimate, or it's 20 bucks, another incentive, and it's an expanded expansion to the universe. There you go. Yeah. Again, it's, it's, look, there are a lot of things going on at Microsoft right now, a lot that we know about, and there are a lot that we don't know about. Uh, I, I think that the overall arc plan that, that Phil had, and again, I still, I still consider it like a secret invasion because a lot of people, you know, again, when you, when you look at the big picture, you don't really always think of everything I had listed. You know, you think of Game Pass, sure. You think about the new console, sure. You think about 35 teams with, tw uh, you know, with 23 first-party studios, sure. But it's all these in-between stuff that a lot of people lo overlook. You know, I want to go to, um, you know, l let's go to Forte on this one first. Uh, or should I say next? Forte, look, again, I painted a picture that has Phil like Dr. Evil with his master plan now maybe i'm wrong for that maybe because i maybe you can consider me being a fanboy or, or or cheering for the for the team i like the best but when you put all of the all the work he has done in order the way i did on and there's some stuff that we don't know that he's doing that three billion gamer that he's looking to get to play on any screen seems not only feasible but logical at the same time. What what, what do you thought of, of my thoughts and theories? The way I, I I put this topic together. Well, it isn't just Phil. You know, it's the CEO of the company, Sally Nadella, coming out saying the same thing in a bunch of interviews over the course of the last month, talking about how they're in, how they're a hundred percent on gaming, and they want to reach that three billion uh, threshold of gaming. And gaming isn't just on the system; it's not just on the box. It's as far as we can reach with, um, you know, reaching our player base and beyond. And moving into Fortnite is a genius idea that everybody, you know, if if I was, if someone was to ask me, like, yo, F Master Chief's going to end up in Fortnite, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised Kratos is there because now a lot of these companies are starting to realize that the power of Fortnite is real. It is. In fact, you got to think, the fact that <laughs> a billion dollar company is going to war with a trillion dollar company over 30%. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the fact that they have literally put a campaign against Apple on this lets you know mm -hmm. how big they are. And they have moved mountains in the past before, especially when it has come to things like cross play and cross progression. It wasn't so long. Ago, it seems like a long time ago, but it was not so long ago where if you uh, linked your PlayStation account to an Epic account, you couldn't unleak it and link it to any other. You couldn't play on any other system with that account. It was basically tied to your PS4 account. Now you can do that. You wasn't able to play with anybody on other platforms. Who did that? Fortnite did that. And they, they have really changed the mind of trillion dollar companies. So the fact that this is something that's actually happening is um, pretty amazing. The fact that Phil Spencer and everyone else is starting to see that Yo, we really can't compete with this game, but why won't we use our 
Why won't we market ourselves inside of it? And it's not just Fortnite. Steve from Minecraft is in the biggest game on on uh, Nintendo Switch Smash Brothers. Yeah, well, so so is Banjo Kazooie. Banjo Kazooie's over there now. He he so so it's just they are without really being able to like say all of their games like Halo and Banjo is on the Switch. They're basically saying, "Yo, you could play with these characters." in our ecosystem and it kind of reminds people of the characters that either a their parents grew up with or they just remember you know because they were in high school or college and you know halo nights you know going on blood goats you know the seven seven o'clock in the morning and got a final the next day you know that was the thing for me you know blood goats was like life when i was in college it was kind of crazy but um, I'm so attacked right now that it hurts. <laughs> so it's like I truly, I I do, I really think that this is a really, really good move for them to make because it really doesn't cost them anything. You know, they're using an asset that Fortnite would love to have in there. You know, Epic is like, yeah, we, yeah, we'll take just Microsoft is happy to give them a cut of this. They say, uh, of course oh, they are. Instead of every sale of, micro, of of Master Chief that you put in there, Epic was like that just helps our brand be even bigger, and, and you know it just it just permeates throughout the industry. And the bigger that Fortnite gets, the bigger Master Chief gets, the bigger Kratos gets. You know you can't think those people can get any bigger than they are. They're lifetime iconic figures, and this isn't going to like it's Epic Ghost and everybody said this isn't going to stop here. I do see the future where you see Marcus Phoenix in there. I do see a future where Aloy and all of the different characters, Joe might get, he might get resurrected from the dead and actually be running around with a shotgun inside of Fortnite. I can see all this type of stuff. So it just really just comes down to um, right place, right time. And this game just being so influential with the youth that they have to do something like this because that's where all the kids are playing people used to think that PUBG was going to be the next generation version of what games were going to be a little game that started out as a literally a survival game in Fortnite literally in six months turned into the biggest game and the biggest IP when it comes to Battle Royale ever and this is this isn't going to slow down anytime soon. So as long as they're on this ride with them, they're going to capitalize with it just like they do with Nintendo when it comes to their almost 70 million people that play on that platform. And guess what? Whenever you go to the store and you see Fortnite, Master Chief is sitting right there. Indeed. And, and uh, yeah, I absolutely agree. I, I think that it is ingenious. And, and, and remember, I called this one of my Game Award picks that didn't come uh, true. Uh, but I am calling it now. I, I think that uh, in 2021, uh, as we get closer to the release of Halo Infinite, uh, Master Chief is going to show up in uh, S- Super Smash Brothers. Uh, you 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 can Ooh. confirm that. I, I, again, I have no sources. I am telling you, Master Chief will be joining Seth Roth and the rest of those people. And, and quite frankly, it is probably one of the best fighting games ever made. The, the cast is just insane. And Master Chief belongs there right alongside... Uh, uh, Fort, uh, let me say Fortnite, right alongside Banjo Kazooie, and, and I think he's going to show up in a big way, and I think that's going to coincide with the uh, the relaunch, if you will, of uh, the Halo franchise uh, in holiday of next year. Uh, I want to thank Noof Nukem. You know who he is, our good friend Arnold. Uh, he's in the chat. He drops an outstanding five dollars super chat and says, "Super excited for Perfect Dark, Next Fable, Hellblade Two, and more. The waiting sucks worse than a cheap vacuum from the '80s." Great podcast as always. <laughs> yeah, good old Noof always throwing those sexual innuendos around. I love it, Noof. Thanks so much for being. As a matter of fact, Noof is going to be joining us on Friday's very special holiday edition of Breakfast with Boom. And yes. Arnold will be making a grand appearance to talk about the potential of him coming back to do Jingle All the Way 2 in the trenches. So we're going to get that information from him on Friday morning. But let's get over to someone that has been a little quiet. And normally he is. He's very soft-spoken. Clowns, let's get you in on this for you. Is Have I painted a picture that makes sense? Is the secret invasion coming 
to the gaming community in the form of Phil Spencer? Well, I mean, I think that with Phil Spencer at the helm, I think we're going to see a lot more crossovers with characters into different systems, consoles, uh, services, games, etc. I think, you know, Phil is more about uh, sharing the love amongst the community. He doesn't really try to hold stuff back into one ecosystem. So for me, it doesn't surprise me at all, like like uh, Incipit Ghost and everybody else alluded to, is that we see Master Chief in Fortnite. And for that fact alone, Master Chief is going to become an icon for generations to come that play Fortnite that may not have ever experienced Halo. And now they might be curious and be like, huh, who is this guy? What games has he been in? Uh, I might want to go back and try those games or play those games. Oh, they're in Game Pass? Well, I'm going to try that because my dad or mom already has Game Pass. And uh, it, Master Chief Collection's in there, and it's free for me to play. So why not experience that? Oh, Halo Infinite's coming out. I better ask mom or dad for that, too. So, I mean, it, it's like ingenious in a sense. Yeah, sure, you know, whatever Fortnite, whatever Epic takes a cut of the character, sure, no problem. But Microsoft still owns the IP. They're sharing the profits off that. They're still going to earn some bucks off it. But in the at the end of the day, it's about spreading that icon amongst as many players as possible. And Fortnite is a type of game that is played on the Switch. It's, you know, it's played on multiple ecosystems. And I believe you can even now... Uh, I, I can't you log into your same account on multiple consoles and multiple ecosystems. Anybody on the panel? What you what are you talking about uh, for for Fortnite? Like yeah, like can't can't you cross? Dude, save I, your... I, I, I I I purchased Kratos on the PlayStation Five. Went to my Xbox, downloaded Fortnite, and all my stuff was there. Yeah, you could absolutely cross. So all. Have an epic account. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So I mean that is. That's perfect. I mean, why not, right? And, you know, if Phil Spencer at the end of the day doesn't care if Sony has their characters on there either or Nintendo has their characters on there either. He's not that type of guy to say, oh, I'm going to exclude Microsoft content just because another party's content's on there. No. You know, he was the type of guy that, that still continued Minecraft updates on the PlayStation after Microsoft bought uh, Mojang. So, I mean, we're seeing... What we're actually seeing Phil's vision right now. This is really Phil's vision and the direction that he wanted to take. This ain't the the Donnie D back in the day that kept everything Good tight and exclusive, Donnie right? D. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th everything we see right now is a buildup of Phil's vision. And it's only going to get wider and bigger. And it's going to go across more ecosystems. I would not be surprised to see more Microsoft content. I'm not saying, you know, first party games and whatnot, right? But I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to see more Microsoft content spread across more areas in gaming at all. I, you know, I just, it's funny you should say that because I, 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 I was thinking about doing a topic. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's just my opinion. But you know what? Be, because Microsoft has not made any moves uh, with Banjo Kazooie, which, in my opinion, is a disgrace. I, I think that 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 that, that for a, for um, you know a developer and a publisher like Microsoft who wants to bring everyone in and have games for all generations, platformers are part of that conversation. I, I again, I can't say that they're not working on it. What I can say is it hasn't been uh, announced. What I would love to see, and I know this is may, maybe I'm uh, you know walking on eggshells here, if they don't want to do it. Then maybe you should give it to Nintendo and let them put it out on the Switch, and then and uh, and that version release on the on, on the X. Uh, again, I, I would love a collaboration like that because obviously Banjo Kazooie is in Smash, so why not? In my yeah, opinion. I mean that's oh, right. perfect right there. there. Um, the and I was gonna say, oh, that's all right. I was just gonna say too. Like, imagine you could take you could take the Battle Toads, right? You could take the Battle Toads, the Lila's vision of the Battle Toads, mm -hmm. because of the way they're animated today. They it kind of like touches kids and talks to kids. So you could put that into Fortnite as a costume for your character. You yep. could put that into Super Smash. You could even put that into like uh, Super Mario Kart if Nintendo allowed it. So I mean, it's just it. This is. This is the time it is to be a gamer right now, to see everything come together. And we're going to get more and more open executives, I think, on all platforms in the future. Uh, I'm not saying that Sony's going to change their ways today or Nintendo's going to change their ways today. But I think with Phil leading the way and Xbox leading the way, I think other 
consoles and other um, systems and other executives are going to start to open up and be like, huh, well, what Xbox is doing is working for them. So why don't we try it for ourselves as well? So I think it's just a, a, a like an olive branch that's going to keep extending out and it's just going to get better and better from here. I agree. Can I push back on one thing that's happening that sure. I, I see it happen often and I, I don't mean to step on toes, but I do think there is an over evangelization of the name Phil Spencer. I think too often we in the Xbox community, and I include myself in this to be clear, we sometimes look at Phil Spencer, Phil Spencer, Phil Spencer. And I think based on those interviews that we, that I often hear from him, he'd be the first to say it's the team. It's the team that's doing mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. And if we're using the name Phil Spencer as uh, a marker for the era, the same way we do with Don Matrick and that era, then I completely am behind it. But I don't think we should attribute every good decision uh, that Xbox and Microsoft are making to Phil. I think there's a, a share of credit because he is a leader. But I want to make sure that we as gamers are still being critical where we need to be because being critical of people you look up to or leaders is an important part of uh, retaining balance and making sure that while being critical, you're not being aggressive or, or like uh, disrespectful, et cetera. There's a difference in those two things. But I think sometimes we look at Phil as the savior of Xbox. And while in many ways that might be true, there are a lot of voices that I think we forget to celebrate. And I'm glad in, in this year we're seeing more of those voices uh, be celebrated. A name, the name Sarah Bond is one of my favorite names at Xbox right oh, now. She, she's a big deal. Uh, she, yeah, she, she, she not only holds a fantastic position, but she is a big voice. You see, I, I, and I see well, your point. I, love I gotta, say, in that I gotta say something though. Uh, I understand where you're coming from, Insipid, and to an extent, I agree with you absolutely. But I think in this aspect, right? I think when I say, or when people say give credit to Phil, it's it's more or less that Phil's opening the doors for his team to have a creative vision. Phil's saying, I'm not gonna micromanage you, come up with your own ideas and make it happen. Whereas guys like Donnie Matrick would say, no, absolutely no, you cannot go outside of the spectrum. I'll cut you off, I'll cut your fun, it's not gonna happen, we're not doing it. Where Phil's like, okay, give it a try, see what happens, and then we'll go from there. And that's why I always say that, you know, I like Phil Spencer's vision for Xbox because he allows his teams to create and originate and go from there with whatever they want to do. He didn't tell the initiative they had to do a, a perfect dark reboot. He just said, make a game. And they were allowed to do what they wanted to do. So I, at the end of the day, in some sense, though, I do give credit to Phil Spencer there. And as far as Phil Spencer saving the Xbox brand. Yeah, he um, did. That, that's a fact. He did. Tim, Tim Dog really and I, he yes, was actually he we were actually talking because there were articles uh, from a few years ago where Satya was actually considering, uh, you know, splitting up the Xbox brand or selling it off. Mm -hmm. And Phil came in and sat in his office and was like, listen, I got a vision for gaming and I can make this happen. Just give me a chance. And then sat is like, OK. And then look, look where Xbox is today. It's become Absolutely. such an open ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Absolutely. And I agree with that. And I just don't want but I don't want to fall into a trap of evangelizing a name so much that we don't offer it critique where due. No. I, and, and, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. Coming from a coming from a position of you know of a leadership position of like exactly know what you're talking about. When it comes to us as the fans, and it comes to the outside people that look in inward and don't know what the inner workings of a company are, you can easily everybody's going to praise and everybody's going to Monday the person who is in charge. That's just going to be it's just how it's going to be. The difference is. The leader, like Phil Spencer, he, the people that he showcased, the people that he pats on the back and, you know, he calls out by name are the ones that will, that, that brings more attention to people that aren't him than us trying to do it for him. Because no matter what we think, the company goes you know where phil spencer goes it, it you know even though that's not the case there is 23 studios uh hundreds of executives that work under the xbox umbrella 
it all falls on him because you're only as good as your weakest link. And he has to build that chain. He went out and recruited Sarah Bond from T-Mobile and said that she will be a huge fit for their gaming division. And they uh, integrated her into the ecosystem where she doesn't just touch gaming. She touches everything from the min- the Windows Store to the uh, the platform of Xbox plus xCloud. So that was something he did. And it doesn't diminish her role with the company but he's the one that brought her to this role. But when he calls her out and says what she's doing is such a uh, monumental thing, that's when we start taking notice of those other people. But on the day-to-day basis, people are going to give Phil Spencer all the love and support that he can get until he doesn't deserve it anymore, which isn't going to ever be a case because as of right now, he's moving in the right direction. But I do 100% agree with you. Um, us being on podcast and us being the voice of a lot of people that are in the chat and in the community that don't know as much as we know, it's our job to showcase and highlight those people. But when it comes to the greater good, everybody outside of us, they're all going to look at Phil Spencer as the beginning, the end, the alpha and omega of Xbox until he's no longer with Xbox anymore. Yeah. I mean, I, I, mm. I think everyone has had a monster point, but speaking of monsters and not because he's Dr. Evil either, um, the mag, I saved you for last because I want you to, you know, like the Hulk saving everyone in um, issue four of secret wars, holding up that mountain on his back. I expect you to come in with a big power statement here. Listen, I've used a lot of Marvel puns. Obviously, I'm a big MCU fan. Uh, The announcement from Disney uh, of all the Marvel shows coming had me salivating, and it's still reeling even, uh, you know, a weekend later. For you, seeing everything that we've just talked about, Mag, and, and, and having, you know, me come up with the opinion that I believe that this was, in fact, a secret invasion that a lot of people overlooked. What are your thoughts on this? First of all, I'm a little skinnier than the Hulk. So, you know. <laughs> but I doesn't mean, you, doesn't mean you're, more, you're less powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say this. It feels like Microsoft is going for that slow burn approach. Yes. They're they're doing this very slow and calculated, and they're going to try and make as few mistakes as possible. I know that some I know that the feeling out there for a lot of fans and everything else, you're going to think actually, you know, just like you said like two minutes ago, boom. Okay, you know, like the Hulk coming in last minute to save the day, and it's going to be this big bombastic, like we're going to thrash everybody, step on throats, slitting necks, all this kind of stuff. They're not going to do that. Because at the same time, on top of the fact that they are going to be uh, gunning for global domination, it also costs a ton of money to do that. So in order for a (laughs) you know, they're not going to risk everything just to be bombastic. So we've been watching, especially as Xbox fans, okay, we've been watching this happen for what, years now? Four years, I believe? We've been watching this happen and i remember when phil first took over and i'm yes okay i'm bringing up phil but you know (laughs) but you know the thing is when he took over immediately my thought was yes this is it let's see what he can do and slowly but surely he gave us that promise you remember that e3 2016 was it e3 2016 he had the speech the speech i like to call it the one where he talked about that you know the future of xbox and everything else and what he planned to do and you know the thing is Say what you want, okay? Podcast what you want. Put on Twitter. Tweet out whatever you want. Put on Facebook whatever you want. But one by one, everything he said in that show, he's doing. Now, it's not going to happen overnight, okay? This is not uh, Marvel's endgame where uh, all of a sudden 400 superheroes are going to show up and start throwing spears and, like, going crazy and laser bolts. It's not going to happen. They're going to do it one thing at a time because it – You know, boom, you've said it. I don't know how many thousands of times I've heard you say it on podcasts. It takes a long time to turn a big ship. Indeed. Okay. Yep. Try. That is is one of your token phrases. I've heard you say it a million times on a million shows. It's a, you can't just turn it on a dime. So it's, it's a slow process. So, anyways, the point is, it's a slow burn approach. And they're just building and building and building. And I almost feel, even though this might be a little bit against what I just said about sensationalism, but there is a part of me that says that there's a bit of a rope-a-dope style going on right now. They're, they're just kind of, you know, out of nowhere, they're just going to go, bam, you're going to get that shot right in the face, okay? And then you're going to get, now, you know what's going to happen? And this is where people are going to say, holy good Lord, 
we did not see this coming, even though we see it coming. They won't see it coming. I mean, they, I mean, the general population is that by late 2021 and into 2022, it is going to be knockout punch after knockout punch after knockout punch. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people understand the, the, the gravity and the severity of owning the the, 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 the huge amount of uh, studios that they purchased and they built from the ground up. I don't think they realize how many games are actually going to be coming. The amount of output that's going to be coming. I don't think they're ready for it. You know what's another great example? Look what happened la uh, earlier this week. WB came out, okay, and what did they do? They're like, oh, by the way, all our movies, kablamo, right on HBO Max, okay? What was it? Not even 24 hours later, Disney shows up and goes, hold my beer. And then they released like what? They talked about what? Like 40 new bloody shows and movies and all their yeah, big crazy. It is insane. But it's not like they just came up with that yesterday. They've been working on it since like 20, uh, 2007 when Iron Man came out. This was planned all the way back then, You, but it takes a long time to get there. But now, watch what's going to happen next year with Disney+. Plus. Boom, boom, boom. Jab after jab after knockout punch after knockout punch when all these shows start coming out. And everybody's going to be like, oh, my God, you won't be able to ignore it. Okay, I don't need to reiterate and regurgitate everything that Xbox is doing. But we all know what they're doing. Like I said earlier, okay, the key to this global domination is the quality of the final product. That is going to be the key. As I said in my last um, little discussion, okay, or rant, whatever you want to call it. Now, you could have 10,000 games in Game Pass, but if they aren't dominating uh, podcasts, if they aren't dominating comment sections or media articles, the Game Awards, okay, then it's all for naught. It, they will do well, okay, but it won't dominate. As long, but you see, not as long as you got third party bangers exist and your naughty dogs are out there, you got to match those levels and exceed them at some point. And I know that they will. I truly, in my heart, I feel I know that they will. But in the meantime, I see what they're doing. They're not only cornering the mobile market with streaming. I'm not talking about cornering the mobile market because you know Nintendo's got that under control, okay? But the streaming mobile market, they're cornering that. But also the Game, you know, the game Pass subscription model. And speaking of which, by the way, you know... Um, uh, oh my goodness, I almost lost my thought. For yeah, right. So this is what I was getting at. Sorry. You know, the streaming wars has begun on the TV level and on the movie level, right? Which I had just said. Now, that's going to spill into the games industry. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, so that's streaming war between, you know, uh, WB, HBO, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, Netflix. Now, now that, that that war is starting to rage, okay, that's going to spill over into the games industry. And now who's there right now? Except the big dog is Microsoft. They have the games, past, present, and future, okay? They've got the devs, they got the studio, they got the money, the infrastructure, and they basically have made that their home field. You know, like they say in basketball, you know, when someone tries to make a big move in the paint, and what, what, what does the guy do in the defender? He's like, oh, you're you my house now. You're in my house. What are you going to do? You're my, yeah, you're in my house. What are you going to do? Okay, that's what Xbox is doing. Okay, they're saying that the stadium right now. Anyone wants to try and compete with them, it's their house. Their court, their rules. Check, please. It's done. <laughs> okay, it's done. But now you move on to what we've all been discussing for the last 15 minutes. What do we got? We got Halo. Or sorry, Halo. Excuse me. We got Master Chief. He shows up in Fortnite. But who else showed up in Fortnite? Kratos. Okay? Also a genius move by Sony. See, now here's an interesting thing. I'll bring up another example here. Like my son who plays Fortnite every day. Okay? He's only eight years old, but he plays it every single day. He didn't know who Kratos was until he saw me playing um a god of war on the ps5 because i'm still gunning for that bloody platinum yeah pony alert yeah, yeah, yeah say it chat go ahead crispy anyhow the point is he didn't know who kratos was until he saw me playing the ps5 and he's like that's the guy that's the guy from the god of war game you play daddy and i'm like yeah that's him dude that's, him. that's what happened with my students they're like that's the guy and right suddenly they figured out who master Chief was also yeah, if you yeah. get the plat and you beat those valkyries you're the man Oh, I'm I'm almost there. I'm almost there. So, uh, so that here's one the last Valkyrie is ridiculous. Oh, I've got, I've got a game plan for her. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, now, now here's the other thing, though. He did play Halo. Okay, he's played the Halo games before because what they were in Game Pass. 
And he saw them and he goes, can I play those? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, they're not gory. I mean, at that time he was only seven, but I'm looking at him like, man, it's green blood and blue blood. What the hell is the difference? So he was playing those. Then all of a sudden, Master Chief showed up in Fortnite. He came flying up the stairs and he's like, daddy, daddy, that guy from Halo is in the game. And I'm like, what game? And he goes, Fortnite. I go downstairs and there he is. He got the two bundles there. You could buy just the skin and then you could buy the Halo bundle with the, you know, with the Warthog and all the other stuff. And it's kind of, and I'm like, now I want to buy it. <laughs> okay. 46 year old man. Yeah. Okay. Shame me, everybody. 46 year old man. Guess what? Tonight I'm buying the $25, uh, uh you know, Master Chief, whatever. Bundle. Bundle. I'm going to yeah. buy it. Okay. I'm going to buy V bucks on my Christmas list. There you go. Now here's the thing. Now you've got now. Okay, fine. The fact that we have Xboxes all over my house. Yes, my son was exposed to that. But there are people out there who do not have Xboxes, and now they're wondering who this guy is. Okay, and then all of a sudden, let's say little Johnny gets um next year. Okay, not this year maybe, but next year they get a Series S. Okay, because you can get the Game Pass thing. It's a it's a it's a lot more affordable. You could still get a next gen experience. Well, guess what? Little Johnny's going to see that. He's going to be you know they're going to make the correlation. So what they're trying to do. They're not trying to market us. I've said this a million times too. They're trying to market those younger people. They're trying Indeed. to yes. those little bugs inside of their brains and get them to grow a nest in there. And what does it do? You win the mind share of the next generation, not this generation, not us, not the people in the chat. They care about us. Sure. Because we are the ones spending money. Uh, I, I am ashamed to tell you how much money I spent this fall. Okay. So far on new consoles, games and everything else. Sure. But who's, going to be after me it's going to be those eight-year-olds it's going to be nine-year-olds and that's who they want that's who they they are shooting for exactly so when game pass becomes a disney plus at 60 million subs we're going to be in a retirement home okay it's going to be those kids it's going to be those eight-year-olds who are now 20-year-olds okay they're the ones who are going to be the they're going to be the big dogs now and guess what for christmas i'm going to be the one who has to dish out you know uh, hundreds of dollars of whatever to to get uh, to get them new games and new subscriptions and whatever else right that's who they're gunning for so that's how you do it you plant the seed okay you plant the seed they did sony did it with kratos and now microsoft has done it with master chief this is brilliant and that's what they got to do they've got to continue to market that younger audience because what is microsoft doing they're playing the long game this is not checkers they're playing chess yeah okay you want to play checkers go right ahead but they're not playing checkers they're playing chess a sophisticated man's game may i say okay <laughs> so that's what they're doing and and by doing that and like i said targeting that younger audience you're going for the 5 year plan which they're executing now then they change that to the 10 year plan to the 15 year plan to the 20 year plan this is not like going to be an overnight thing and all of a sudden in 2025 it's gone you know it's going to be it's going to keep going and that's how all these companies do it disney do you think that disney plus is just going to go yeah we're going to blow out a bunch of marvel movies and then i don't know in 5 years we got nothing left no when they did phase one, okay, of Iron Man in 2007, they already had phase five planned out, okay? Yeah. And they knew that they had a plan for 20. Kevin Feige said it himself. He had a 40-year plan. That's ridiculous. You don't think Xbox has that? They're a trillion-dollar company. Of course, they got a 40-year plan, a 50-year plan, because when Phil retires and, and Matt Booty retires and Satya Nadella retires and all of them, the company still has to go on. And so in order for that to happen, you have to keep marketing the younger audiences and on and on and on. So what they're doing is absolutely brilliant. It's going to work. But you know, the thing is, they're going to have to do some cross promotion when Halo Infinite comes out. What they're okay. gonna have- I, 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 I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm telling you, that is when Master Chief is going into Smash. Yes, they're going to. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You did mention that earlier. So they're going to do that. But you know what they need to do? You know how uh, Fortnite has those events? Okay, mm-hmm. they have live events and then they'll have uh you know my uh I, I watched my son play where galactus showed up right and like millions of people across the world played the galactus event you don't think that at some point they're going to have a master chief live event world global event a halo event that's going to tie in with the launch of halo infinite you damn so dope. Right. yeah you damn right they're going to do that because microsoft's going to pay epic to do it they're going to be like hey we want a big time live event, and that's what's going to get people to dovetail right into it. And what are they going to do right after they finish the event? Bang, it's going to be there. Play the next Halo Infinite on Xbox Game Pass. It's going to show up right there in the game. 
and I'm telling you that's what they're going to do. I hope I'm right because that would be absolutely brilliant. Phil, if you're listening, come on, buddy. You got to do it. So anyways, the point is that's what I think they're doing, and I'm super excited to see where it's going to go, and I'm glad that they're doing this and they're branching out to get more people interested in the Xbox ecosystem. And, and I couldn't agree more. I think this was a strong, strong topic, a lot, a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of speculation, a lot of big well, Do you mind if I just add uh, one quick thing because uh, I didn't get a chance to say something? Sure, sure, absolutely. It, it'll be quick. Uh, I, I always thought that Microsoft missed an opportunity when Battle Royale was uh, becoming you know, the next big thing with, to do a Battle Royale maybe with using their their avatars, you know, the avatars that we never use now. But um, if they if they you know, they didn't if they're not gonna make their own battle royale or not have any of their game have a battle royale mode or a Halo not have it, why not go to the bat you know, the next the, the next biggest thing, you know, let's say Fortnite. You know, Luke alluded to, uh every uh Mag just alluded to right now. It's all about brand recognition. You know, yep. they have all this analytic data that they know how many how many people are playing, they know how many you know halo came on 2001 guys there there's a lot of people out there that have not played a halo so yeah that's all about brand recognition boom said it earlier he downloads kratos on his you know whatever system that he downloads he can play on whatever uh system that he has so yeah it's all you know marketing is showcasing the power of you know microsoft and phil I know um, uh, Luke mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, we, sometimes we hold Phil to the highest standards. Yeah, we do. But I also think that whenever something doesn't go um, Xbox ways, he's also the first to, that we also blame. Right. Why didn't Phil? Do, why is he he's doing also this? the why first one to, to, to get on right you know, on social media, to, to, you know, to say, yeah, listen, it's on me. I'm the boss. Yep. So, um, yeah, um, I think uh, he he truly does care about all the gamers he he just wants you to play wherever you want to play and i think you know allowing master chief to go over i think it's just one of one of many uh crossovers that we'll probably get i i you know and i agree i i think we're going to start seeing more and more because obviously it's again the key the key aspect to the whole conversation is brand recognition cyber don't go anywhere brother because we're going to go to you first on the next topic. But before I get to the next topic, I do want to shout out a couple of people that dropped some super chats in here. Uh, and the wise old gamer, good friend of the show, recovering friend of the show. Uh, obviously, I'm glad to hear that your health is somewhat improving, my brother. He drops an outstanding five dollars super says, Are you saying we can have Sethoroff and Master Chief in Smash Brothers? Geez, thank you for holding of this prediction after the no nut November. <laughs> uh, we have uh, two super chats come in from CYV Studios, both for $2. Thank you for your generosity and more importantly, you being here to support the channel with your view. He says first, what's up panel? Where's the Where the head goes, the body goes. Indeed, that's a strong point. Phil is the head and the team is the body. And that's a great, great point. Uh, we had a super chat literally just come in uh, from our of all very good friend of the show, very generous friend of the show, Nightwolf 3186. He drops an outstanding two dollars super chat and says, Just gotta say, you dudes are awesome. Well, Nightwolf, thank you for the ultimate compliment. We're glad you're enjoying the show, but I do want to move on to the next topic, and it is another big one. Look, here's the thing this is a this is one of those kind of topics that as a showrunner. You you write because you are interested. Uh, again, it, it it it's it's an original piece, so get ready and let's let's hear the opinions fly. Um, on December third of this year, EA announced that Casey Hudson, the general manager of Bioware, along with Mark Dar, uh, the executive producer of the upcoming Dragon Age, will be departing the company. Now, this will be the second time that Casey Hudson has left EA. This time, and I believe we has been confirmed that it's per- it's a permanent removal. Uh, and um, Look, this is one of the biggest changes to come to the Xbox platform since Phil Spencer was uh, now uh, made the big announcement at E3 2018 when they acquired Obsidian, Ninja Theory, Playground Games, Undead Labs, Compulsion, and of course announced a new studio called The Initiative. A lot now, obviously, you fast forward to uh, 2020, and uh, they have 23 first-party studios 
with the Monster Zenimax Studio acquisition, along with 35 teams making games for the Xbox platform. Now, this is the big question. It's a simple question. It's a question that doesn't have a lot of syllables, but it's one that is simple in its form, but in its answer is going to be uh, going to be uh, perplexing and thought provoking. Now, with Casey Hudson being a free agent, we don't know what his plans are. Right. One could suggest that he has made enough money that he could retire, but he is not that old of a man. And he also seems to be a, uh, to, to be a person or, or, or a creator or an artist that is always looking to be challenged, always looking to make the next Mass Effect that we know that he has in that, that glorious brain of his. Here's the question for the, t- for the team. Coming off of hits like KOTOR, Jade Empire, and Mass Effect, just to name a few, having someone like that work at Microsoft, not at the ARVR aspect where he was after he left Bioware the first time. And I think that that was talent. That was something he wanted to do. And I'm not going to say it's wasted talent, but his talent is in, pardon me, making games. And the same way, you know, we all talk about, and we we all do this. Who is Microsoft going to buy next? Is it going to be Rockstar? Is it going to be this one? Is it going to be that one? But I have a feeling, and again, this is just an assumption. This is just my personal opinion and what I would like to see them do. The same way they created the initiative, the first quadruple A studio that has now been confirmed to be making Perfect Dark. I would love to see them bring Casey Hudson in, bring Mark Dar in on the conversation and say, listen, we want to create a studio that you want to be the boss of. We know that things didn't go well for you at EA. We understand that there was a lot of crunch and there was a lot of people crying on their desk. Well, that's not how we do things here at Microsoft. We let you make whatever you want. Just pitch the idea and we're going to have someone wheel in a whole truckload of money. I don't think it's that simple, but to, to paraphrase, that's how I think it goes down. And I think Casey Hudson has a few more ideas in that head of his. And I think that having something like Mass Effect a Mass Effect type game being an Xbox first party with Microsoft's blessing and backing could be big. The question is simple. And I'm going to start with cyber on this. Should Microsoft more specifically Phil Spencer have a sit down with Casey Hudson and offer to build a studio from the ground up for Xbox game studios? Oh, absolutely. Why not? Right. Casey Hudson obviously is known in the gaming industry, especially for everything that he's done, you know, Mass Effect and everything else. So why not? He, he He's just out there. He worked for Microsoft before. Yep. Right. He was working on HoloLens things. So uh, it, it would be a tremendous opportunity. Um, they missed the opportunity that we often talked about, about purchasing Bioware at the time that they could have bought them. So why not go for the next best, best thing, which is Casey Hudson and, and, and uh, Mike Dar? you know, they uh, get those two in the same room, talk to them, see what they envision if they want to stay in gaming too that's one of the things that we don't know right if exactly they, yes if, if they want to stay in the gaming uh space or if they want to move on to you know other things but uh, obviously why not sit down i'm sure they have tremendous uh, respect for each other and um the one thing that would worry me uh would be um not it's not really worry it's just um now we see that we have bethesda now we see uh or until they actually, you know, cross all the T's and dot all the lines and makes that official official. So let's say we we have Bethesda now and we have, you know, um, who's making a vowel again? Oh, that's Obsidian. Oh, oh we have Obsidian. Um, just I, I know those games are a, a little bit different, but the RPG, like this Western RPG, is really like all coming to. Um, uh, to Microsoft and Xbox. I just, uh, if Casey Hudson came in, maybe, uh, you know, do something different or have a different vision for what he intends to do. Um, the, it, it would be great. You know, I, I just thought, I, I'm not sure if it would just, you know, it'll be uh, an, an overflow 
of the same genre technically on the xbox uh, uh ecosystem let's say but why not you know? that he would come in and not make a rpg no, oh, if, well, I think what, he, what I'm I, I, saying is, you don't think there would be too many RPGs? No, oh, yeah. there's no. never enough RPGs. No, okay. no. Hey. I made a game like Mass Effect. I, I'm just. No, I'm just, I know. Here, here's the thing. To, to to your point, I, I understand. Know. I understand the apprehension, um, Cyber, and it makes sense. If, wait a second, you know that they, they they have all of these RPG makers, right? And they're all under one umbrella. Too many RPGs, maybe, maybe it's gonna it's it's gonna stink up the joint. But here's the thing. No one says that exact point to when Sony puts out all of these over-the-shoulder, story-driven, third-person, uh, adult-themed titles, right? We all want more. At least oh, I want sure, more yeah. of those. So, you know, again, Microsoft, we know that these RPGs are coming. Plus, again, we don't know if this is going to happen. This is very hypothetical. It, it, it's my opinion that I think it should happen. I think that a talent like Casey Hudson doesn't come around that often. If he wants sure. to stay yeah. in the business, I think Microsoft should listen. I'll say this. Maybe Microsoft doesn't um, get, offer him a job. May, maybe he wants to go with Mark and make his own new studio. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But I'll tell you what I would do. If I'm the guy signing the checks uh, in, in, in Sati and Adal, I tell Phil Spencer, hey, listen, that Casey Hudson guy, the, you know, the Mass Effect one, do me a favor, reach out to him and extend the olive rent and say, whatever they need, we will publish their game and we'll funnel money into their new studio. So whatever they come out with is going to be exclusive on our brand. Now, whether that's make them a part of the company or just do a second party deal, I don't care either or. But I still think it's worth investigating, Luke. Let's 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 bring you in the conversation because you are our guest, and obviously, I think you have to get up early, so we don't want to keep you too late. Um, Casey Hudson, his his resume is ridiculous, and again, like Phil Spencer, we don't want to say that he's the only one. He works with he has worked with an amazing team. That same team is not at Bioware anymore, at least not the team that he used to work with when he made these big hits, uh, and that's fine. And we don't know what his plans are, right? He's a free agent only since December 5th. And for all we know, this could have been something that was done three months ago, and we just found out about it. We don't know his plans, but if his plans are to stay in gaming, if he wants to create his own studio or potentially, you know, make, you know, he approach, you know, approaches Microsoft with a new idea, should he not, with his credentials, be offered a brand new, from the ground up built studio like the initiative? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> okay, then please, by all means, explain why you believe that is in fact the case. Well, in gaming, we have short memories, uh, and it's a very much an entertainment industry that is, what have you done for me lately? I think it would behoove Microsoft to pick up the phone find out what the terms might be, find out what it is he wants to do, what it is he's hoping to create. Does he have ideas kicking around? And then seek to bring him into the fold if it's cost effective. But a ground up studio uh, is a big undertaking for someone who has not shipped a worthwhile game uh, in a long time. And I say that knowing full well that, that Bioware commands pedigree. However, since Dragon Age Inquisition, they have not lived up to their own standards. Uh, I adored and had a blast with Anthem, but the game promised the wrong experience and many people left disappointed. I had a great single player time and then left it, right? Uh, there, there are elements that are good, but, but, what has he done for the gaming industry lately? That is not meant to be an insult to his pedigree. That is not meant to insult his catalog. That is not even meant to directly insult Bioware, though by, it is a backhanded uh, statement. I recognize that. Um, I think they need to pick up the phone and feel it out and see what's going on. And I'm sure they have, as has Sony, as has uh, Amazon with Luna stuff and Stadia, etc. Everybody should be talking to Casey Hudson. But a ground-up studio... No questions asked, building that bad boy up. I, I hesitate on that. Um, if it was Kojima, then I would say yes, absolutely. Because everybody will buy that Kojima game off the bat without even knowing what it is. Uh, I don't think there are many people like that. I don't think Casey Hudson has that that level of pedigree that, that, that commands the ground-up studio. To many of my panelists' points, 
they certainly need to continue bringing in talent. They want a subscription service. And and as the, the joke was, you can't have it too many RPGs. That's correct. And I think your comparison is apt. Those third-person narrative-driven games are all, are all over the place for Sony, and people keep gobbling them up, myself included. You cannot have too many studios making content for your subscription service if you want to meet, to meet uh, the demand of 3 billion screens. And having regular content for them from double A to triple A to indie uh, on those screens. So yeah, they need to pick up the phone boom, but I don't think they need to be, uh, you know, breaking their necks to enhance stands for a guy that hasn't led a studio to a critical or commercial hit uh, in the last what decade? I would say uh, it's been, I, my timeline. Inquisition was what 2013, 14. I'd have to go back and look to be clear. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not evangelize i'm not going after him as the, the number one but i do think he's a, he's a name that they should seek to bring into their fold if it's cost effective and available okay i mean and you made great points fantastic points as always uh i i just think that there are um there are reasons for these games not working and and i think that at the center we can never forget that ea uh, the overlords of gaming were at the center of the production woes. And, and again, that's that's my personal opinion. Maybe I'm making them out to be the big bad. You know what I'm saying? I think I think that a lot of people in this chat will agree that EA is and has ruined teams. They have closed studios on, on a fart. You so, you make a good point, Boom. But I will point out who's ne- so we're talking about big names that you build studios for. Vince Sampella, when it was a part of EA and was able to rise above that, that EA ism, I don't know, whatever, whatever that I know exactly the curse that you're speaking of. And I, I see it happen with many a studio, but somehow, you know, Zampella's uh, ability, pedigree and clout pushed respawn to make Titanfalls one and two and apex legends and Jedi fall in order. And now a new project that we're not sure of. And he's heading up studios. Uh, Casey didn't do that. Right. So you don't quite pull out the same type of chair in the same type of way. Uh, but but I do agree with you. Working with Microsoft would be a very different experience than working with EA. We, we've got documented proof of that from multiple developers. They certainly allowed studios to make the games they want to make. For goodness sakes, uh, Ninja Theory got to make Bleeding Edge uh, and publish it while working on Hellblade 2. And those games could not be more polar in their levels of intensity their art design what it is they're trying to achieve uh you look at uh obsidian and grounded and uh, i mean i had adam brennicky on xcp a few months ago and his his team is like what 15 people yes 15 people yep. at obsidian people. entertainment so they're able there's they're able to produce this hit that is grounded million players in the first week and it's only getting better while in early access there there are names out there in the gaming verse that do great things with small, small budgets and within their, their means. Uh, I, I think Casey could do well if given the freedom, but I just don't know that the, the full on studio right off the bat is, is deserved. And I will gladly eat crow on that. I will gladly be wrong because that only benefits me to be wrong on that. I yeah. want to play great games and I want to play them on Xbox. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Uh, l- let's get Forte into it. Forte, you are an RPG connoisseur. Uh, Casey Hudson, for you, have uh, made lasting impressions. Uh, Jade Empire, KOTOR 1, Mass Effect. These are all games that transcend generations that some people are still playing. Uh, that some people play religiously each and every year just to re-experience it. Uh, I think that he still has a lot of gas in the tank. I personally think that, like uh, like um, um, Insipid just said, they should reach out to him. But I am confident that working for Microsoft, the way that they do business, could produce something. And I, I again, I'm not I'm not the guy signing the checks. Who the hell am I? I'm just a guy that has a a 7,000 follower uh, podcast, but I still think that he could potentially be worthy. And if you surround him with the kind of talent that seems to be coming over almost on a weekly and monthly basis to Xbox game studios, they could potentially push out something impressive. Now, granted it would be five years from now, but it would still be impressive. Nonetheless, should 
Casey Hudson be considered to be given his own studio? Whew. Okay. So I literally just said that um, the man you should... Almost, you almost took my head out. That's what yeah, you I almost did. said. <laughs> so I did say, you know, not even 10 minutes ago that the man needs to, you know, make an RPG because, you know, the world not having somebody making something like even close to what Master... I don't know if it had to be Mass Effect. It doesn't have to be anything like that. It's just the fact that that came from that man's head and I kind of want to get something similar or at least the chance to play an RPG, uh, another RPG that's made by him. So I that's one thing. But the other thing is, I kind of agree with Sepit. You can't kind of give that man... If I think about the people that got studios from games, you know, just the studio, just because of their name, like he said, Zen from Pella, what did Call of Duty do? He made literally the most popular Call of Duties at that point is what it's literally the he's literally the reason that Halo went into a decline because his Call of Duties became that good that it literally changed the market when it came to the way we look at first person shooters. Then you think of somebody like Daryl Gallagher. What did he make? He rebooted the Tomb Raider series, which some people will probably tell you are kind of better than the Uncharted games, especially when it comes to like the very first one and the second one. It kind of does Uncharted better. You know, of course, Uncharted has better story, um, you know, elements, which, which makes those games, st- those games stand apart. But when it comes to the gameplay aspects, you definitely feel like the Uncharted games I mean, are it's like. They literally refined what the Uncharted games were in combat and made them even better in Tomb Raider. And I see it, those games do nothing but get better and better every time they come out. So he didn't have any type of um, downside when it came to this. If this was a decision that was back in 2017, absolutely. They had the opportunity back then to do it. Uh, and I'm not saying that he can't come back and make a game with the cachet as a Mass Effect again or a Dragon Age type game again, him or him or Mark Dar. The biggest thing is it is, it is literally an industry of what have you done for me lately. And lately they have given us Anthem. They have given us Andromeda. What, and what else? I think oh well, they gave us Dragon Age, but he wasn't there when Dragon Age came when Dragon Age Inquisition came out. That was somebody else. That was um. That was Mark Dar. So and then Casey Hudson came back for um towards the end of Anthem and and I'll give him credit. He did fix that game to the point where that game was not a game. Him and Mark Dar fixed that game to the point where it didn't even run. We didn't even know what the game was, and they just got that game out the door. And it actually had very good uh gameplay elements. It just story lacked in-game lack and i don't hold that really against them because the it's like the whole development of the game was just the crap but i don't forget that ea is definitely the publisher at the head of all this but the one thing that i try not to do is blame ea for everything because it is kind of easy to do that because ea is just like we just like we say the whole thing about phil spencer Bill Spencer is the head of Xbox. EA is the head of, you know, Bioware when it comes to them. They don't really have it. They have Peter Morbid. They don't have a really big face, but it's just EA, you know, in the end. But overall, EA definitely has their hands in the cookie jars on a lot of different things that's going on. And we really don't know how far that development goes. But like Isipa just said, Zis from Hella found a way to rise above that on multiple occasions with multiple games. So I, I, I look at it as a situation whereas, yes, the phone should be picked up because why wouldn't you? And you should definitely have a conversation to see him, like like you said, what he wants to make, um, what kind of ideas he have. And he should be in a very high leadership role. I do agree with I do believe that should be the case. But I want to have somebody in, in the role of studio head that's going to give me that I know has a proven track record with this generation's worth of, of kids, because this generation and our generation are two completely different things. And as much as a lot of us love games like mass effect, the last mass effect didn't do too well. And it was rejected by us as the fans. It was rejected by younger people that didn't even try it because we weren't hyping it up. And who knows what the next dragon age game is going to be, which is, they have their hands cemented in a hundred percent because they literally were there for most of the development and who knows where that game's going to go now. So I definitely want to see him um, 
as a part of the Xbox family because I do feel like he will be an invaluable piece, especially to their plight as being one of the best RPG makers in the world. Because when it comes to Western RPG, they have all of them. And that was something that he was very, very good at instrument instrumental at. And maybe he can um maybe he could be one of those people that could consult for Xbox, especially when it comes to like some of the games like Evolved and like some of the thing ideas that they had when it came to Dragon Age. He could definitely step into a like a leadership role like that. And then depending on how pitiful uh, how pitiful his um his um, what's the name is it with all of these games and like helping Xbox get better RPG games out. Then we can start talking about moving him into a position where he can build its own IP. But there's has to be, there has to be something that has to give because I can't just give you the keys where the keys that you gave back to me every time I literally had to go in and fix a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff. You know, that's just, that's just not the way that business works, but I do understand where you're coming from because it's a sexy fit. It's a sexy look, but Xbox ain't the Dallas Cowboys. We ain't trying to just hire a sexy coach just to have him walk the sidelines. We're trying to win Super Bowls here. And mm-hmm. that's what Xbox is trying to fix. Now they don't need another dud. They need something that is a surefire thing. And right now I just don't think Casey's that it doesn't mean he can't get back to it. But they need something surefire right now instead of trying to reach for the stars and hoping it can actually pay out for them. Oh, I mean, great point. Strong point by everyone so far. I'm going to get to clowns and we'll, we'll, we'll close out the show with uh, with Mag giving us his strong opinion. But first, Mid J Rod drops not one, but two outstanding and very generous $5 super chats. And he shares a pretty cool story with us. He says, Very great show. I have two sons, 28 and 29. Every time they visit, they say, hey, dad, let's play Halo. That's how much we love Halo. And, dude, that's a great story. Thank you so much for your generosity. But more importantly, brother, thank you for sharing that story. And and, and I love it. I, I love video game family stories. I think that it's super, super important. But, clowns, listen, you have interviewed a ton of people this year. I think it's most interviews you've ever done. So you've you've been rubbing elbows with the elites of the industry. Casey Hudson is one of those elites. Now you have yet to interview him. Hopefully that that can transpire. But is he a name that Microsoft goes out and gets for that sexy new car smell that he might bring to the Xbox Game Studios? Yeah, you know, boom, speaking of that, a lot of people actually are asking me if I'm going to try to interview him. And yes, I will. I will try to talk to him and get him on for an interview. But I got to say that I think so. You know, I, I think that he's the type of guy that would come in to Xbox, bring his experience in, and hopefully create some type of epic uh, new IP RPG or roguelite game, and I think that would be very successful with him at the helm. I think that he's a very talented individual. Um, I don't really know a lot about him as much as other people, but I think that everything that uh, I've been told that he's worked on has been fantastic. I mean, I like the Mass Effect stuff. I like Dragon Age or, like, all the Dragon Age stuff, so there's... Everything that it seems to, to have involved him, I kind of liked. And um, I did actually interview someone that uh, was, I, I think, kind of close to him, or at least uh, within the same uh, band of studios, Jim Hydrill from EA. So uh, I might actually be able to get an interview with him. No, I, I would definitely look into it. But I agree. I, I Again, he has made a lot of games. Maybe he hasn't made a mass effect but i again i i have to uh equate that to working for ea and i think that working for ea is tough i think they have made that very apparent to not only um you know us as gamers looking from the outside in but i think that from many of these stories that have broken for ea and their practices it seems like it's very hard to do. And Microsoft is not that kind of company. They do let you do what you want to do. And I think with the freedom and the potential financial backing, Casey could bring something special. And I agree with you. And I think definitely think you should try and get, if you can get that interview, man, good on you. That'd be a, definitely a big one for you. And uh, mm-hmm. last but no way least, uh, Mag, let's get you in on the conversation. Yep. Casey Hudson, 
-hmm. Again, a lot of people talk about this is a kind of a, uh, you know, a, a, a dog eat dog world. And they want to know what you've done for them lately. And I, I know people are going to say, well, you know, Casey Hudson, you know, he was involved in one of, uh, you know, Bioware's worst games in Anthem. But he really wasn't in there for the whole thing. He came in on the back end to kind of make things. He was brought in to, as the fixer. And I think that the same way we, we, we put people on pedestals, do, do we really blame him for the woes of Anthem when he wasn't there for most of the development? Well, I mean, I guess that's subjective. But does – I mean, listen, if you are Phil – are you looking at Casey Hudson as a potential breadwinner? Bring this guy in. Maybe he's got some stories left to tell that could be as epic as Jade Empire, you know, Mass Effect or even KOTOR. You know, I, I'm, I'm a little bit on the fence with this because I read both of their, uh, him and Mark Dara's uh, uh, reti retire, air quotes, retirement letters. Right, I mean, they're not that old. These guys. It's not like they're in their. No, they're 70s. in their forties, dude. Yeah, exactly. they're mm -hmm. our age. So you know, they're, it's not like they're seventy years old and like riding off to the sunset. However, Mark Dara's sounds a little bit more like a retirement letter. Like it actually sounds like he has no desire to come back to anything. He's just like goodbye, you know. Whereas Casey Hudson's sounds like he's not done yet. Mm -hmm. Just doesn't want to do it at EA, but you could tell that there's a you know if you look at it like for example, I hire people, okay? I'm the big boss. I hire people, so when I deal with that, I look at I don't look at what they do or what they can do. You know what I actually do? I look at the resumes and I see how many people they've worked for, how many companies they worked for in the last five years, and if it's more than like let's say three or four, then you know then you start to wonder there's something going on. You know, and I don't want to go down that road because I don't, you know, I'm not saying that that's what, you know, Casey Hudson's situation is. Maybe he's not reliable. I'm not saying that, but it is a little suspect when you see him jumping back and forth and back and forth. So maybe it's something on his end, or maybe he just wasn't happy with, you know, trying out new things. You know what I mean? Like some people will try that. I mean, the guy's not, the guy's not broke. He doesn't need the work. I looked it up. He's, his net worth is over 20 million US. Okay. So I think at that point, when you are, financially set like that what ends up happening is you start to experiment at the different options going let me try this now because now you have the financial freedom to be able to do that you don't have to worry about feeding your family not with that kind of money in your bank right so the point is maybe he was experimenting a little bit because you could see a little bit of turbulence happen from what 2015 till now you know <clears throat> excuse me he leaves uh, bioware he goes to microsoft he leaves Microsoft, goes back to Bioware. Now he's leaving Bioware again. You're like, what the hell is going on? So to me, it sounds like he's trying different things, right? Maybe just trying to expand his horizons a little bit. And maybe the thought of him going right back into game development with another giant corporation like Microsoft might not appeal to him, especially that he doesn't necessarily need the money, okay? Maybe it's just something he's not interested in. Maybe he's interested in... Um, you know, writing stories for indie titles or something. Because it sounds like he's not done. You know what I'm saying? Like, it sounds like he's not finished this whole charade. Excuse me one more. Sorry, had to cough. <laughs> Anyways, the point is, in terms of Microsoft, absolutely I would approach him. Because his stories are excellent. Now, anybody, where, by the way, this is a little side note. Anybody worried about Dragon Age 4? I wouldn't worry too much about Dragon Age 4 just because he left. Because what I think is happening is that his DNA is already in that game. Yeah, okay. I agree. It's already there. It's already imprinted. He's already put his, you know, basically his mind, okay, has been melded, so to speak, with this game. So we're going to get... You know, we're gonna like I said, we're gonna be playing something that's coming from his mind, not a fixer upper that he had to jump in and try to save last minute. Okay, this was you know him and Mark Dar. This is their game. Okay, so we're gonna get something that they're gonna polish it up. Hopefully, it turns out great, and I do have hope for it. And I'm, I'm honestly, I'm really looking forward to it. But anyways, in terms of him, um, Microsoft, yes, I would approach him. Now, opening up a whole new studio, starting from scratch, not really. I'm not really, I don't, I'm not really feeling that. And I don't really have a real answer as to why. I just feel that maybe they should continue down that road of doing, you know, I hate to keep bringing it up, but, but I'm going to bring it up. They have to keep doing what Sony does. They're getting these smaller companies and start to cultivate them. You know, for example, Naughty Dog wasn't always Naughty Dog. Mm -hmm. the they are now. They were a tiny little dev at one point. Okay. It was like four guys in a garage. <laughs> okay, and that was Naughty Dog. Now look at them. 
Okay, now they got uh, now they got offices bigger than the Walmart headquarters for crying out loud. But anyways, the point is that's how they started. But you see where Microsoft is going. They got compulsion games. I never heard of compulsion games. Did you ever hear of these guys? But no. now they're making a Bioshock slash Uncharted game. They might be the next naughty dog. So maybe they're gonna go that route. Start small, you know, and get people who are hungry. And that's the key. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I was trying to get at earlier is what I was saying about Casey Hudson. Hungry people who have really wild ideas, who really do have mouths to feed. Okay, let's not forget while we're doing this, everybody doesn't work just for fun, you know, just to make me smile on the couch, okay, and while I'm playing a game. They're doing it to feed their families. So what are they going to do? They're going to try and gun for the top. So maybe you go for those young buck upstarts. You know, maybe not go for someone who's already been doing it a while. Maybe he's a little tired of it. Maybe he doesn't want to go back and revisit a Mass Effect style game that's going to take him five or six more years of his life to finish one game and then hope that Metacritic doesn't rip his ass apart. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's a lot to go through. You know, I don't think people give enough credit for how much crap these guys have to go through. Yeah, uh, no, true. Look at CD Projekt Red. Those guys... I'm not defending the game because I haven't even played it yet, okay? So I'm not going to say it's good or bad. I haven't even turned the damn thing on. I'm waiting until pat patches keep coming through, right? So the point is, those guys poured their blood, sweat, and tears into that, and it's not performing up to snuff, and they're getting shredded. Do you think he wants to go through that again when he's already been going through this like for like 20 plus years? Yes, his games have been outstanding. They've been critical successes up until, you know, the last couple of blunders, which again, weren't, weren't his fault. But is he really going to want to go through it all over again? I don't think so. I don't vibe it. I think that he might go the route if he does as a consultant. And I think that that would be a really good idea. Maybe like sort of be in the background and sort of give his advice and his uh, his know-how, his experience to these guys and say, listen, this is what I did. I'm going to teach you guys, but you go your own way. But I don't think he wants the responsibility of being the top dog with his name in every single gaming media site every day that he's working on a new game. I don't think he wants that anymore. And I think that that might be one of the reasons why he's done with Bioware or maybe even the games industry in 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 total. Who the hell knows? But, I mean, it's worth a shot. But I think Phil, if him and Phil sat down, okay, and they talked about it, I bet you that that, that would be a good idea. Maybe put him in that consulting position. Yeah. So now, I, again, we, we don't really know. It's all speculation. This was just something I thought would be a good, uh, you know, uh, caveat to an, a very, very powerful and Xbox-led show. Folks, we are 15 minutes past the two-hour mark. This has been great. I want to thank the over 400 people that came out to support Double Barrel Gaming's primetime gaming each and every Monday evening. Uh, I also want to thank the genera gener very generous Super Chats that continue to come in. Uh, understand that uh, I, I expect nothing. I am very humbled by all of the Super Chats, and uh, we do pour those back into the community and that's how we do these uh, big giveaways. This year, uh, when it's all said and done, Mrs. Boom and my brother Neo Mental will have given away over three thousand dollars worth of prizes. And yeah. not every show does that. Uh, we, I, I know shows that have triple, quadruple the amount of numbers don't even do half of that. And we do that because of our love and respect for the community that supports us. I want to thank everybody for that and the continued support. Uh, and of course we are on the road to 10 K. Uh, we are at 7,200. Hopefully we can hit 10 K in 2021. That would be a big deal. Uh, it's a, it's a number that I, uh, I, it, it's, it's like a milestone that all YouTubers want to get to, you know, you get your first thousand, then you get your first 5,000. And of course, then you move on to the 10 Ks and that's when you start to kind of really turn those wheels but listen let's get our guests on out of here and we'll start with our very special guest luke lore also known as the insipid ghost the voice of the xbox expansion pass a show that you definitely deserve not only all the accolades but you need to get more people getting their ears and listening to your program it's very well produced uh the amount of guests that you have is nothing short of astounding Luke, why don't you tell everyone about where they can follow you on social media, but more importantly, subscribe to the X Xbox Expansion Pass. Sorry, I was muted again. Ha. 
Uh, Boom, thank you for having me. Man, I had such a blast with you guys. It was a pleasure to finally get to work with you again. I have missed that greatly. Uh, The Xbox Expansion Pass is a show I host solo, and it offers an analytical look at all the news as it pertains specifically to the Xbox ecosystem. I do indeed try to have a lot of industry guests on the show, voice actors, developers, uh, producers of all types from around the industry. Most recently, we had on a gentleman named uh, Ali Alatalo who is uh, a 10 year veteran who works for a, a company called 10 tons limited. They specialize in twin stick shooters. So only came oh, in. Nice. Yeah. I love those. Yeah. I mean, and they just most recent one is a uh, Tesla force, but he came in, uh, it, well, he spoke to me from Finland and just talked about making twin stick shooters. I, I love sharing those stories with gamers on the Xbox expansion pass. And, uh, because it's it's not on YouTube, uh, I know it's tough for some ears to find it, and that would mean the world if you guys would seek it out and and give it a shot. Well, yes, I think I, I think just because it's not on YouTube doesn't mean that it's not accessible. I think that all you have to do is download it on one of your favorite uh, podcast sites uh, that you can just look for the Xbox Expansion Pass, and it's going to be something you're going to want to tune into weekly. It's again well produced, and uh, yeah, again you you always do thought provoking content, and definitely appreciate what you bring to the community. So thank you for guesting. And we definitely got to get you back on the Xbox Factor podcast when you got some time off from school. And hopefully we can do that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Next, Gaming Forte. First of all, brother, not only has your channel exploded, I think the work that you do with Slow Mo Backslap, a very good friend of myself and you, his channel has exploded because you know what? You guys put out great content. Tell everyone where they can reach out to you on social media, but more importantly, check out one of the 3,333 podcasts you're on weekly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's uh, it's, it's amazing being here with you guys. It was a really good show, man. The it always good podcast with you, brother. Um, super, uh, always impressed with your uh, content on your channel, man. And um, definitely got to come through and check out the expansion pass even more than I actually do, but love the content that you make, so keep that up. Um, Thank you, man. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. Outside of that, Gaming Forte everywhere, YouTube, Twitter, Xbox Live, PlayStation, um, DPS Podcast, Thursday, 9 p.m. on my channel with my co-host, Slow Mo Backslap. Um, Going to be a very interesting show this week, so definitely um, stay tuned to that. Uh, check us out on the Brat Podcast, 9 p.m. on Wednesday nights and Crossfire on Fridays at 7 p.m. And every once in a while when I'm not working, um, <laughs> 90% of the time I'm working on the day of Scumcast. And guess what? I always try to find a way to get on the show because they say something crazy and I say, I gotta go on lunch. <laughs> and I'll just go live on the show while I'm in the back room on lunch and have something to say about it. So more than likely I'll still show up there. But um, this is a great show, man. I really appreciate all of you guys and all the support you guys have given me over the course of this great 2020 when it comes to just growth and you know gaming and everything so i hope and extend that same um handshake to all of you guys so i will see you guys on next week and chat have a good weekend yeah well thanks so much for being here brother and definitely we could not do this show without you so of course we appreciate you giving us your time cybernox why don't you tell us about where they could reach out to you on social media potentially be arrested by the cape crusader <laughs> and more importantly check out your outstanding and growing youtube channel absolutely thank you so much boom and congratulations on the 7k once again you deserve it my brother thank you, sir. Thank you. 10k is gonna come real quick you deserve all the credit man you put a lot of hard work and you're always giving back to the community man um luke i always listen to uh expansion pass on itunes man when i'm at the gym so if you haven't subscribed to him there already please go ahead and do it it's an awesome show what he does it's the production value is tremendous man keep it up uh always love being here with you guys um cyber knocks everywhere xbox um I, you know that's where i'm primarily game uh this thursday sorry for today uh i am gonna be uh doing a live um discussion with uh tempest and cotton on my channel we're just gonna be we're gonna take be taking a looking uh we're gonna take a a look back at the xbox one generation and just talk about some of the things that we like some of the things that we didn't like our favorite games and so forth then where we see xbox moving forward so if you want to listen to that this thursday 8 p.m we're only going to talk for a little bit so you can 
listen to us for a little bit and then go and hop over to Forte's DPS podcast and catch those guys. They're always awesome. I always love their uh, banter back and forth. It's amazing. And yeah, so I can't wait to be here next week uh, as well, uh, talking more games with you guys. And stay safe out there, everybody, and keep on gaming, all right? Oh, well, thanks so much, brother. Your show. I was going to be like, if you go in at nine, we go in at 10. There you go. That's right. Go, go, go. You know what? Let, let, let's make a 10 hour podcast. Well, we don't. I don't know if we're going to be able to be alive after that, but we'll, we'll figure it out. And last and no way least, Dr. Evil himself, the yeah. mag. Uh, why don't you tell everyone about where they could reach out to you, potentially get a new recipe, and also check out some of the photos of your hairless cat. <laughs> you mean Gizmo? Yeah, yeah. Gizmo, I mean, which I, I think have. he looks like Yoda, but okay. I went with Yoda. I went with Yoda. <laughs> the wife went with Gizmo. Yeah. Well, she won. So it's Gizmo, it is. Um, yeah, he is a rare blue sphinx cat and he is dynamite. And you know what's really cool? When I walk around the house, he walks on my shoulder like a parrot. It's fantastic. So, uh, anyways, I love it. So, um, anyway, <laughs> tonight's show was nothing short of fantastic. It's Sipid Ghost. You impressed the living hell out of me every word you said was like you know when like you know when like you're in kindergarten like the teacher talks and like reading your story and just like listen to every word that's what it was tonight you're fantastic i absolutely adored it so yes you guys gotta follow this guy he's amazing i had a great show tonight thank you for being on the show with us brother anyhow um yes you can follow me on twitter at the middle age game guy that's with a g y at the end and uh yes please follow me you know why because i always have ridiculous photos and i have a whole lot of video <laughs> a whole lot of video content i've already released and i have a whole lot more coming not on youtube on twitter so it'll all be there you got to follow me for the hijinks because my god the amount of stuff that i've got coming from this insane brain of mine boy you guys are in for a treat uh, anyways, boom, as always, a pleasure to be here. Yes, you can catch me here every week, every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every Tuesday night, you can also find me on Gaming After Dark with none other than Noof Nukem and Titan Drago. And uh, I believe next, oh boy, the next couple of weeks, we got some great guests signed up. I will not uh, spoil the surprise, but we have some great guests coming up on that show. Uh, also on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, you can find me at one word, all capitals, because I don't know how to be quiet. I am the mag with two Gs. You can follow me there too, and we can play some games together. Guys, everybody, it was a great show. Let's have all a great night. Oh, man. If they well, do how unplugged you are, on on gave me after dark they would show up yeah absolutely 100 oh i i'm 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 like there's no cage large enough to hold this beast when i go off why do you listen to forte i never even see you in the chat ever i was on the show with you two weeks or three weeks ago (laughs) yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i know that but uh, oh you missed last week i was like i I listen to when i'm editing a video i'm listening to that every tuesday because i'm off on tuesdays and wednesdays well, well, dude, I, I, I will tell you. I will tell you this. Uh, the, the the personality is uh, you can't. You you can only hope to contain it, not control yeah. it. Let's just say that. Uh, and, and he can also say, remember, you're not. Tra- you're trapped in here with me, uh, which is always. Uh, <laughs> Which is always concerning. But listen, folks, this has been a great show. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to close out the show with something that's important to me. Hopefully one day it'll be important to you. And it's something that my dear old dad taught me when I was a kid. It made me a better New York City police officer where I served my community that I grew up for 21 plus years. And I think it made me a better human being. More importantly, he used to say, son, treat others how you want to be treated. And also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules and I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day so take care everyone we'll see you next week on the newest episode of primetime gaming with mr boomstick and friends 